All right, cool. Recording has started. Um, so yeah, today we're going to be doing, like I said, we're going to be doing the blockout for this character. We're going to, um, you know, start figuring out the proportions in ZBrush. Nothing's going to look good as of right now. Again, like it'll take, uh, it'll take a few streams before anything starts looking good, but we're going to start getting like our, our major shapes and forms to kind of, uh, uh, feel the character out and, and, uh, and get things started. Um, but before we start that, because, um, we're going to uh, be starting at, at 9.30, like I said. Um, we're going to look at some some concepts first. Um, and Evil had shared his concept there. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. I don't. I kind of assumed gender. I actually don't know what your gender is, Evil. But, um, and um, yeah, we're going to just have a closer look at this. Um, so I looked at this earlier this week. Um, and you did, you did address a lot of the, the points that I had mentioned, which was like how the shoes felt a little bit manufactured. You had kind of like a, a rubber detailed sole which you fixed up. Now I couldn't, as far as um, the design goes, I think like the, you, have, you have your ideas um, there. Um, now I'm not gonna make an anatomical notes because anatomy really isn't important in design. It's kind of, just figuring out your character mainly proportions matter um but if like things like oh you could probably like refine the shoulders a little bit or something like that stuff like that i'm not really going to worry about um folds and details like that you could you could have that but it, you your idea is sold with this um now i will say that uh, although i definitely like that you've changed the bag the, the like the big box didn't really make sense to me if she's going to be traveling a lot um again like mostly my own opinions but it just felt a little bit strange because i know that if you have a shoulder bag or something that stuff just like wraps around you all the time <laughs> because i have a shoulder bag and i used to bike with it and it would it would always like flip to my front when i'm biking so if you have like a big box and it just has a shoulder strap that thing's just gonna like fly all over the place and it's not gonna be very ideal um so this is definitely better for for um for adventuring and traveling and you were worried about having like um things bumping around and stuff you like inside the bag you know that's actually a valid thing too is you could design the inside of the bag um so like figuring it out but it could have been like inside the bag it just has a bunch of straps with, with your little alchemy vials strapped to the to the walls of the bag right stuff like that um you could even have like little sleeves that's that slide into the bag that have like little slits in it um can you check mine out yes uh, i could, definitely can scott um the other point that i would make here is these little these little details you could probably make them more of a statement they're very tiny um maybe try try like pushing those a little bit making them bigger again it depends on style maybe you want to have um you want to have some more like less you don't necessarily want to have super huge exaggeration but based off of this like cartoony look that you have going i think that exaggerating the size of things will work well for you um, also things like this, this dagger, she couldn't hold this because it's very small. It's, it's smaller than her hand, right? Um, so that's stuff to consider as well. Um, let's see, overall things are looking pretty good. Maybe you could kind of figure out how her, how her hair connects to the back of her neck. I feel like it would be something like that. Um, But, you know, that's just stuff to play with. Okay, so we're going to look at, uh, at Scat's design as well. Um, all right, Scat, where is your thing? Okay. I remember seeing it earlier. I didn't comment on it because uh, you didn't put the, uh, the comment on this tag. Uh, copy image. This is kind of funny. I, I found I I had a little bit of a chuckle with this one because it's like a super modern outfit, but it's it's also kind of fantastical with like the magic holding the little plates and stuff. She's got a witch on her chest. It's it's, it's funny. I, I like it. Um, so I think the the biggest thing uh, for design that I'd point out right off the bat is you need you need other angles, right? So I would I would definitely draw a back view. Um, at the very least, 
Um, I don't know much about your character. Um, let me just review this a little bit. Um, okay. Uh, more, feel more like our own backstory. Okay. So you want to make her feel more witch like. Um, so the, the thing about making a character feel like a witch, now, this goes into what I was saying last week about tropes and using tropes to your advantage, and tropes aren't necessarily a bad thing. Um, so people are often afraid of tropes. I'm not afraid of tropes. Again, I'm speaking completely from my own opinion. You can, you can disagree with me if you like, but because she has no elements that actually have like the classic, oh, this is a witch character, um, you don't get it right off the bat, right? She just says witch on her chest. Um, like, you could do a lot of things, like, you know, you have your classic hat, right? So, that, that instantly is like, oh yeah, now it's a witch, right? <laughs> you got your witch hat, now you're, you're a witch. Um, so it's just, it's stuff like that. Um, but you can look at, at a bunch of things to make them feel like a witch, right? You can have, like, some sort of robe or something like that as well to kind of get that feeling. So, like, a cloak or something would get that kind of feeling, right? Um, so you don't have any of these elements that would make someone say like, oh, right off the bat, oh, this is a witch, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, right? So like you could say like, that's how you just wanted to tell your story, right? Like witches are just people who have magical abilities, but they're just, they look like your average Joe, right? Um, I don't really know why you have this kind of mask thing going on, but I think that might be, you're trying to get that kind of feeling. It could be, ooh. Oh, yeah. What the? Oh, I drew on the wrong layer again. <laughs> I could have sworn I created another layer, but I ended up just drawing over top like an idiot. Whatever. Um, but yeah, stuff like that, if that makes any sense. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're, you're good. No worries. Um, if you say which three times in a row, uh, Sweetie appears in there. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, could be a gun witch. Uh, so with a big hat, uh, big dress, but she has armor. Yeah, you could do stuff like that too. Tell me, uh, they're more modern. Yeah, if you're, um, if you'd like to stick to technically witches are focused. Yeah. Yeah, that's true too. Like, you could make them, instead of like having a freaking, um, like this kind of conflicts with the whole witch thing, right? Um, I don't know why, oh, this is kind of funny. <laughs> like a freaking deer leg in her, in her crossbow. Um, so yeah, I don't really understand why this is there. And I don't understand why she has a, a crossbow with a SWAT outfit. Um, so there's a lot of like conflicting aspects to the design um, that just don't really necessarily fit together. Like if, if she has magic, why is she using a crossbow? Um, and like, uh, like Helbeglin said there, um, whoops, um, you could go with the approach that if they're a witch, they're going to use more like um, potions or medicines or something. So they could maybe have like... A lab coat or something right so maybe they're kind of uh a, like a, a lab rat or something and have like i don't know big big glasses or something <laughs> um i don't know there's a bunch of different approaches you can do it but i would try to think about like what kind of outfit would fit with the witch in this in modern times right so um just in time in terms of just thinking of ways to make it so that it doesn't conflict with itself but it is a neat idea. I do like the idea that um, you're you're putting um, something fantastical in a very um, modern setting. Uh, what are people saying here? Uh, modern crossbow. You don't need a wand when you uh, go to run. <laughs> oh, there you go. All right. Um, cool. So I guess we can get started now. Um, just doing some sketches earlier. Um, so we good, we good to get started. 
no worries, no worries. I hope that's helpful. I can go into more depth later too, um, but you know. Um, great. So uh, let us uh, let us get started then. Uh, so the first thing before blocking things out, you don't necessarily have to do this step, but I like to do this step. Um, is I like to take um, take my design here and start figuring out the proportions in 2D first, um, because right now the character is posed, right? Um, so it's a bit difficult to um, to really know what the size and shape of things are um, necessarily. Um, so I like to kind of dig deep. You know, I would I wouldn't do this so much. It depends on how much you want to, how accurate you want to stick to the design. I'm pretty happy with the proportions I have here. Um, so I want to make sure that I'm so somewhere close. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to just duplicate and merge it. Uh, merge selected. And then we're going to copy this. And I set up another file with symmetry. Um, this one here. And we're just going to quickly figure out, figure out the, uh, the shapes and sizes of stuff. Um, all right. Okay, so that's pretty good. Um, that on there. Come on, hit OK. And on, we're just going to create another layer. I'm going to see if symmetry works on all layers. This is actually something I haven't tried before. It does, okay. Um, if I turn this off, does it still do? Okay, good. All right. Um, so I want symmetry to be off right now, just so that I can figure out my, my proportions. So what I do is I kind of create like a puppet, um, you know, like a, a mannequin. Um, that's the word I was looking for, a mannequin. So I figure out, okay, so this is the size of the torso, right? Um, is someone killing dogs? No, that's just my neighbors. Um, everyone around in the, in the area has a dog <laughs> and they all, they all bark at each other. And they're all left outside all the time, all day, every day. I wish I could do something about it, but that's just how it is. So. You got to live with what you got, right? Anyway, um, I hope that's not too distracting for, for all of you. Um, but that's just how it has to be. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take this, the head on here, and we're going to just copy this to a new layer. I'm going to hide that. OK, so now I have, oh, not quite. I need to figure out the uh, upper arm. Got the upper arm, right? And I'm gonna just—I'm not too worried about the hands, really. Um, I'll figure that out in 3D. Uh, but maybe this one, just to kind of figure out the size and the shape, kind of feel. Again, just 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 rough enough so that I know what the proportions are. I don't really care about the details in any way. I'll—I won't be like—I'll just be looking in, in the. Um, in ZBrush uh, at the design on the side. So I, I'm not gonna be sticking to it too, too harshly. I also made a mistake here. <laughs> uh, yes. anyway. yeah. uh, so we're gonna just merge these layers, merge with layer below, where is it? There it is. Okay. Uh, so now we got this kind of like puppet, right? Hello, she's waving at us. Um, am I missing anything? Uh, you can't hear the dogs, huh? Yeah. Will I get a dog? No, I'm. Uh, I, I don't. I wouldn't really want to get a dog. It's a lot of work to take care of a, a dog, and uh, that's a little bit too much for me. Um, you can uh, get a huge African python. <laughs> Oh, morbid, morbid. Hold on. Actually, I want to keep my mannequin on another layer now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show this again so that I can kind of figure out, okay, so now that I have, oh, hold on. I need to create a layer with a guide on it. This is a little bit new. I, I normally do this in Photoshop, but I, I wanted to do this in Clip because um, I've been enjoying Clip. <laughs> um, well, let me just put up a guide. Guide. Yeah. And then what we can do is we can link. Uh, I think there's an option. Link guide to ruler.
Hmm. You know what? I'm just going to move this guy and put it in the same place. We can do that with this. You just select this line. Or not. Hold on. Huh. Does it not work? Oh, that's not good. Okay, so it doesn't work the same way that, uh, that symmetry lines work. Oh, there it goes. Okay. I got it. There we go. Centered. All right. So the big thing is I just didn't want symmetry to be activated while I'm moving stuff around. Um, but now that I have this kind of mannequin shape, I can just take... Um, no, I don't like that, but, you know, that's fine. I can just take this stuff and, uh, and just rotate it around to kind of center it out. Okay, so I need that. That's fine. Fine. Okay. Hey, goldfish, man. Uh, it's all Clip's fault. No, no, it's just my lack of knowledge. Okay, we got it. We figured it out. So, we got that. And we got this. Hold on. Ah. Uh, Uh, transform, and I'm trying to think of like how spread apart I want the legs to be. Um, probably somewhat, somewhat spread apart, just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this hand and put it down by the side here, just to kind of get the general proportions, right? Yeah. The the, the thing about doing it this way is that it's good for people that are just kind of analyzing a design and aren't really necessarily the best at um, drawing the same thing over and over again, um, which I'm definitely not. And again, I want to be very, very clear that you don't have to be a really good illustrator to design. You don't even have to be able to draw the same thing over and over again, like I just said. You just have to be able to kind of um, get your ideas out and you can move forward from there, right? So now that I have this kind of basic shape, um, that I've figured out here. Um, I can now just quickly just go over this with this layer uh, activated again. Just turn down the opacity. And I'm just going to, because I'm in symmetry mode here, uh, let me just make sure that that's correct. Yeah. Okay. So the, the big thing is like, I don't care about any of the clothing details or anything like that. I just want to have a general uh, symmetrical kind of reference. Right. Wrong layer. <laughs> Wrong layer. There we go. So now I'm just going to kind of doodle this out, figure out the. Uh... Figure out the hands and the arms, right? And just draw the leg out. So. Okay. And there, now we have kind of a, a basic reference. Uh, million dollar question, T pose or A pose or Y? That's a very good question, actually. And Cicada immediately said APOS, but it is actually variable as to why you do multiple things. So in my past experience, um, there's been a number of uh, different requests of what kind of pose the character has to be in. Um, now, some companies will say they want this, APOS. I prefer APOS um, as a personal bias, I guess. Uh, but there's also companies that will want uh, T-Pose specifically. Um, and there's two reasons for this. Now, the problem with A-Pose is it's harder to rig than a T-Pose. T-Pose is the easiest thing to rig. Um, now, that's why you a lot of the times will be like, oh, I want an A-Pose. Or sorry, a T-Pose, because it's easier for rig, it's easier for production. The problem with a T-Pose is that um, it doesn't 
the the arms don't necessarily drop quite as well it's a little bit trickier to get the arms to go down in a appealing way you'll end up a lot of the times you'll end up with characters with very boxy shoulders um which is not ideal um it's definitely like it's not always the case but it, it you'll usually end up that way um so it really depends on what you want a pose is nice uh, because you're already pretty much in the relaxed state and you can uh, kind of maneuver. Uh, if you know that the character will be in that state a little bit, you'll, you can kind of make it so that it, it's, 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 it's closest to its ideal state, right? Um, however, there's also the idea that um, sometimes you might have a, lot, a character that has to like lift their arms a lot. And they have to do with stuff like that a lot. You're going to want to actually be closer to T pose because you're kind of in the middle of their extremes, right? But if they're a character that's usually they have their arms down or they're just walking around, even if they're just like swinging a weapon or something, this is probably more ideal. Um, but you can go through a number of routes. Uh, I've even seen models go so far as to put them in star pose like this. Right, so their like legs are out to the side and their arms are up like this, um, and that's because they have super extreme range of motion. And you, you just have to you have to consider these things when you're when you're designing, right? Um, because you're going to end up um, causing yourself trouble down the line if you're not uh, working for your project. I don't know. So yeah, there's no there's no one answer. The the answer is you kind of got to figure out what what works best for for your project, right? Also drawing over the face a bit here. Because again, I don't want to have any distractions here. It's, it's really just to kind of figure out the general proportions of the character. That's fine. This is going to be good enough, I think. Um, star pose, yeah. Uh, it's some Mortal Kombat type shit. <laughs> um, I, it real. The star pose is real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, H pose. Hmm. Maybe if you have like a swimming game, H-Pose would be good. <laughs> this is their arms straight up. Because <laughs> they're just diving all the time. <laughs> anyway, the big thing is there's a, there's a number of ways. I mean, you just got to consider what's, uh, what's most ideal for you. Um, and other things to consider too is like sometimes you have to have you have to like match an existing rig and stuff like that too. Like um, when I was on Max Steel, we inherited that show from another company, and um, they had their characters with their arms literally like this, like flat against their side. And I just don't know why, <laughs> but they were they were literally like just like their arms were pretty much touching their sides. Um, and that was just a huge pain in the butt to work with. But we had to do it that way because we, we inherited a show from another company. The eye pose, I know. It was weird. Uh, 
But you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay. So I I got it good good enough. Tell them thank you for the host. For those watching the VOD, um, last last VOD I didn't have the notifications up. Uh, Crossbones, uh, thank you for following. Um, but there were people who were you know giving hosts and following, and I just wanted to make sure that they were recognized for for hanging out and supporting. So I hope it's not too irritating, but. Um, if at the end of this VOD or stream we find out that um, too much, we can always uh, remove it. Just figuring out the means, I guess. I don't really care about that. Um, this is more than enough for my needs. In fact, I'm probably going to end up straying away from this, but it gives me a foundation um, that's kind of kind of close, you know? Um, I'm a spam follow and unfollow. Don't do that. <laughs> Please. That's no one no one will be happy about that. Uh I pose cursed, yeah. Uh thought you turned off the notifications. Yeah, yeah, I had them off last time, but I turned them on this time because um there were folks that had raided and hosted and they didn't like nothing came up. So I wasn't able to say like, oh thanks for this, right? Anyway, so this is good enough. So what we're going to do is go into Maya. I'm gonna open a new Maya. Just uh, give me a second. I should have opened this up before the stream. That's, that was my bad. Um, I'm actually gonna hide my display for a little bit just so that I don't open up any uh, NDA stuff accidentally. All right, just give me one second. Uh, I have to create a project or set a project. Okay. Um, there we go. Uh, why would I hide that cable? All of you want to see it. There's no reason to hide that. Um, we're starting with box modeling? No. Um, actually, no. Uh, so what I do here is I literally just create a plane and slap a texture on it and then throw that into ZBrush. Um, the reason I do that is so that I can kind of figure out um, what the proportions are and make sure that their feet are grounded. Um, but I do all the sculpting in, in ZBrush. Um, I used to just start ZBrush just flat out, but then what ends up happening is you end up with like this tiny character at the origin with like their head just in the grid. <laughs> um, if you start by sculpting the head, that is. Like if you start by sculpting the torso, it's not quite that way. Um, but this is a lot cleaner. And then I can say like, oh, how tall do I want them to be? World units are very important. Um, no, I don't do that. Uh, this is, works way better for me. Um, you can do it however you like, but this is this is important because scale is is in, extremely important. Um, so the first thing I actually do is I go in here and I go to Windows Settings um, and Preferences. Oops, I don't know why that bug is happening, but every time the first time I open Preferences in Maya, it just gives me an error. Um, it's been doing that for a while now. But Settings. Now I set this to feet because I. I know heights and feet. <laughs> if you know heights and meters, then use meters. Um, but I'm, this character is particularly tall, so I'm going to make her probably about 6'2". Um, yeah, I'm probably going to make her like 6'2". Uh, calculator. Yeah, okay. Um, so that's about 2.1, or 6.16. Uh, and the depth is going to be 1. And then, uh, you know, I'm going to make it a clean number. I'm just going to make it 2. She can be pretty tall. 
Uh, all right, so y is going to be 3.1. Let's zero these out. And now I know how big the character is going to be. Um, so this is important. I need this cube. Uh, why is world units important? Uh, can you just scale it up? So there's a number of issues that come up here. Um, you want to know what your character scale is. You can scale it up. The problem is if you're in a production, that's not ideal. Um, you think that's a bit tall? Okay, make, maybe I can make her a little bit shorter. Maybe I'll make her six feet. But she's pretty tall um, based off of her, the size of her head. Um, but here's the thing. So if you are going to scale it up, um, but say in production you get a note and you're like, oh man, now I have to revise it and I have to rebake everything. Um, then you have to rescale it every time <laughs> you want to go and do this process over again. It's much better if your ZBrush matches the scale of your low poly model um, because then it's easy to line things up. You don't have to remember any values. Also think about if you're in a production and you leave the company, um, but you remember the scale and no one else does. Uh, how are they going to match your character in the future? Um, so that's very, very important. You don't want to just mess around with that. It's, it's, it becomes very messy and confusing. It becomes a guessing game, yeah, and it's not ideal. Um, so I highly discourage that. Uh, yeah, make sure they keep you, yeah. Um, but yeah, so I just definitely don't suggest that. Also, if you want to do skins and something for a character, um, like different outfits, um, you'd have to be like rescaling it every single time. It's just, it's just confusing. Um, so it's good to kind of figure out your scale off the bat, make sure everything's correct. Um, now, when I'm done the sculpt, there will be a little bit of shifting, probably. Uh, but just moving things around a little bit, we can do that at the end of the sculpt. Just make sure that the feet are touching the ground. Um, it only becomes complicated if you try to scale something up. Because when I was working on a project, um, I didn't do this. And then they're like, hey, we want to actually make it so that you you scale match the scene, right? And I tried to scale that model, but the problem with ZBrush is if you scale up a model, um, because you're gonna be scaling at the low resolution because you're probably gonna be using Transpose Master or something like that, all the details don't scale. So the mesh scales, but all the details stay the same size. So you end up with like this very muddy blob mesh when you scale something up dramatically. Um, so you don't wanna be scaling a lot in ZBrush. Um, it doesn't give you the best results. So instead, what I, what, I ended up having to do, what I ended up having to do to solve that was I had to like re remove all the subdivision levels and then transpose master it and then scale it. And ZBrush was just dying because it was just, it had way too many polygons. <laughs> and it was just like, it took me like three hours just to scale this object. <laughs> um, so yeah, scale's important, figure it out, get that sorted um, because otherwise you're gonna hate your life. Um, so again, very important. I, I will continue to stress that. I will make her a little bit taller. This is taller, shorter. I think six feet is good. Cable's right. Um, six feet is good. But she's definitely not, um, not short. Um, okay. So, um, I set this back centimeters or, yeah, centimeters. I think centimeters is the default. You're going to end up with this really tiny grid, but I don't care. You, if you cared, you could go to your grid settings, make it bigger, but I, I don't. <laughs> um, cool. Oops. Um, uh -oh. Okay. Maya's is being scary. All right, I don't know why Maya was doing that. <laughs> um, but anyway, so now this is in centimeters. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to save this. Um, and this is going to be... Uh, um layout uh, i'll just do like underscore layout uh, or mm, workshop oh one uh hi this will be the same as my high poly file i guess <laughs> you're in a production and they uh fire you they can use all their time to figure out it was uh it's what uh, they get for kicking. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Scale seems like a whole ordeal. Yeah, it's. I've had so many issues with this stuff, and um, and now whenever I start a company, I I stress it. Like if it's a new company and they're just starting out, I'm like, just figure your scale out now, please. Um. Yeah, because like when I started at my current job, we had a bunch of outsourced stuff, and I spent a, a while just kind of 
making sure the scales are unified. I, I still think there's more assets that we gotta go through. But um, it's important to, to get that sorted. Uh, okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take in my reference plane. And I'm going to put this here. And uh, I forgot to save that as a PNG, hold on. We go and save that. So file, save as. Uh, actually, I should just export it because otherwise it's just going to save weird. Uh, so export, single layer, PNG. Um, Tessiare, Tessio, yeah. Thank you for following. Uh, okay. And now we got our design proportion. And then we just scale that up. Oh, why is it blurry? Uh oh. Ah, thanks, Maya. I don't know why it's doing that, but it is. Is it blurry in all in all views? Yeah. Um, oh, it's because it's a PNG. Hold on. Maya does not like PNGs. Uh, Uh, right. Oh, no, it's still blurry. It's even worse now. <laughs> nope, it's worse now. Okay, hold on. Let me see my export settings. Um, hmm. Nope, it's just the same. That's weird. Uh, Draw Mave is now following. Then you're following. Yeah, okay, so I don't really... Oh, here we go. Output size. Oh, it's... It's getting scaled down. <laughs> uh, I'm stupid. It's fine. I was making emotes earlier, um, so it was exporting them at emote size. <laughs> yeah, we're good. We're good. Uh, we're good. Don't worry about it. Um, yep. It's for me. It's, it's my fault. But I have had issues with images in the past, where it's just like, oh, it doesn't like this file format. And it, doesn't, it doesn't work properly. I'm pretty sure I had issues with PNGs specifically. Um, so I said she was about six feet. I don't, it doesn't have to be incredibly accurate, but she'd be about in there. But yeah, if you look at her head height, she's probably like eight heads tall. So I'm just thinking, you know, she's probably about six feet at least. I'm pretty sure, like, this is a PNG, but I've had issues with larger scale images. Um, and because PNGs are heavier, it can lag Maya. So I've had issues with PNGs. I don't think she's 10 head at all. I didn't really count. I don't, it doesn't matter that much. It would matter if I had, like, a lineup of characters and I was trying to fit a style, but... This is a standalone thing, so it doesn't matter. Um, so great. So now what we do is we export these two things separately. Um, so we're going to export selection. And mesh. OBJ. Um, i trying to think here. Hold on. Yeah. All right. Okay. So this is this is the thing here. Um, this stuff is this this is going to be pretty important, and it's something that isn't commonly explained. So I'm going to go over this real quick. This has to do with ZBrush. So I'm going to create just a temp file. I usually like to just create a temp uh, OBJ in the in the sculpt folder, so I can just like transfer objects as I need. Um, but uh, when it comes to scale. And size of objects in uh, in ZBrush, and even like where the origin is located, ZBrush is very very finicky. <laughs> it does a lot of weird stuff. Um, so here's the thing: because we're working at world units, and ZBrush usually considers like a unit to be a meter. Um, if you make something that's two or three meters high, 
everything messes up. So if you're using decimation, then it's like, even if you have your decimation at the smallest setting, you're gonna get this really dense decimated mesh. Um, or sorry, not decimation, uh, Z remeshing. Um, so that's very difficult for when we wanna do like our, our, our initial sculpting. Um, so we don't want that. But the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import this and we're gonna go into our workshop folder, our sculpt, import this temp. Um, now, we don't want to just do this, right? So, oh yeah, I guess for uh, people who are new to ZBrush, because this is kind of a, a beginner thing. Um, all right, let's, let's do this again. I'm gonna go over this real quickly as well. So when you're starting in ZBrush, um, you have to draw things to a canvas, but when you draw your object to the canvas, you can't actually sculpt on it um, because it's in 2D space. You have to go into edit mode, which is a little bit confusing. Also saving is a little bit different. You don't actually do save as, because this is gonna save your whole project. Um, oh, sorry, no, no, this is what you want. <laughs> you want this, you don't want this uh, document. Don't say document save. You want tool save, save your tool, not your, your document. Anyway, um, okay, back to what I was saying. Now the issue here is um, if I append an object, like a star, this is considered the center of the, of the, of the tool now. It takes the, it takes the center of your object and considers that the center, but I want the center to be the origin, not the middle of my character. Um, I want zero to be the bottom. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the thing. Um, so instead what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to look at this object and I'm going to look at the export settings. Um, now you see what it did here it created a scale value. By default, your scale of a scene is one. But because this is higher, this is gonna affect everything in, the, in this tool. So if I was to say, um, use Decimation Master, not Decimation, I mean uh, Z Remesher, um, then it will use this scale as a, as a kind of a multiplier. Um, so now I can have like a regular number of um, of Z remesh, um, and you won't have this incredibly dense mesh. So this is, this value is important and you have to make sure that this is consistent and never changes because if, if you change this afterwards and you try to export things, then things are going to get a little bit fun, fun, funky. Um, but I'm going to take this value and I'm going to, um, apply it to this. This I'm going to create a, make a poly mesh 3D. Um, I usually like to create just a primitive, any primitive as the root of my um, Z tool. Because if you try to save it, the first object in the scene inherits the name of the file. Um, it, it makes it a little bit difficult to organize and name your objects if your first object is named the file name. Um, so I usually create a, an object and hide it and, and save the file as that. Um, but then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go into my export settings and I'm gonna change, oh, the scale's actually zero. I thought it was one, Never mind. Ah, it didn't. Let me copy. Hold on. Copy, please. Please copy. Will you copy? All right. Uh, export. Nope, it will not. So I'm just going to remember the value, I guess. 91.44. 91.44. Okay. And then we're going to go into subtool and we're going to append our cube. And now the origin is at zero because I've appended this to another tool. Um, that's why I decided to create a new tool and append it as opposed to just work in this file. To see how the, the, the bottom is here, <laughs> right? Now the bottom is up here. Much easier to work with. Um, and that's something to keep in mind too. Also, when we're gonna be importing objects, we're likely not gonna import directly into here. Um, I could probably replace this object, but this is my scale ref. Um, I usually like to keep this in the scene so that I know um, I know what I'm referencing. So this is my six foot ref. Um, and I can open and close that as I see fit. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this guy. This one might act a little bit funny. I've had issues with ZBrush um, where they, they don't like having a single quad imported. Like the UVs get all messed up. Um, but we're gonna try it anyway and see, I like, hope it works. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to subdivide it. Um, but anyway, if I duplicate this object, 
it'll work. I wouldn't import over this object. Um, stuff that's created in ZBrush acts a little bit differently than stuff you import. So if I try to replace this object, it might do something weird, but if I replace this object, then it'll be fine. Uh, hopefully. It might not be, but hopefully. Um, okay. <laughs> that's fine. The, I, I, I figured it would have a few issues with just importing a freaking object. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, oh, shh. I'm an idiot, guys. <laughs> I was exporting an image plane. No, no. I, f I skipped a step. You need, you need a quad. You need a quad, and you need to make sure that this quad matches your settings of this. Sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. Um, okay. Uh, oh, shoot. God damn it. Um, oh, it's 10.24. Yeah, okay. So basically, I have to take my calculator. I have to do 20.859 times 10.24. Okay. And I take this value and I apply it to this. I mean, you don't have to be super precise. It's okay if you're not. Um, but there we go. Now it's the same scale. Um, and the reason I did that is because this is the size of the image, right? See how it's 1024? It was a 1024, um, like the resolution of the image is 1024, which is why it has this multiplier. And then I've scaled it, right? Um, so in order to match it, I had to multiply those two values together in order to get this number. Um, and then I make sure that it matches all the positioning. There. Okay. And now we export this. <laughs> Oh, okay, well, that's not very nice. All right. Um, hey, Blaze, we're just uh, continuing our workshop here. I needed the stuff that my teachers don't show me. Oh, well, yeah, teachers don't necessarily know that stuff. Oh, thanks for saving that number for me, Cable. Um, all the setup for ZBrush is strange to me. Yeah, I, I, I do like to prep my file a lot um, because it just makes life easier down the road. You know what I'm saying? All right. Okay, good. But did the UVs import that? I'm not sure about. Um, so we're going to go texture import uh, workshop for images, and we're going to take uh, our proportion object. Um, and we have to flip this vertically because ZBrush flips your UVs for some reason. Uh, so we're going to flip vertical. Okay. Uh, and then we go to texture. And import. There we go. Great. It worked. No issues. Um, so now we have everything we need to get started. <laughs> and that only took an hour. <laughs> Let me pour some water. Uh, okay. Hold on. Let me, let me pour some water before I do this. Um, read the question up there. I missed. I missed a question. Um, Can you just move the pivot of the object in Maya before exporting? Um, no. <clears throat> if you mean like how I started a file and then it picked the center of the object to be the origin? No, that's how ZBrush works. It basically creates a bounding box around your imported object and says the center is the origin, um, which is weird. But that's why I, I, I append it to a, a ZBrush object to make sure that the, the origin is the origin. Um, the VOD won't be deleted, no. The VOD is actually going to go up on YouTube. I'm uploading all the workshop VODs to YouTube. Um, so you'll be able to watch this stuff later. Um, and if you want to like add questions to the YouTube comments, um, I will answer them. Uh, OK, so let's get started. That was a process, wasn't it? I'm going to move my tablet. All right, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me now. Fortunately, my setup, how my setup is, is like when I pull my tablet down to draw, it covers my keyboard, so it's a little bit, everything becomes more awkward. Um, but uh, I'm going to take my concept art and put this up to the side um, so that I make sure that I'm looking at it. 
Um, it's not going to matter too much at this phase, but we, we got to, you know, keep the character in mind, right? And I think having your concept uh, is, uh, is also very, um, uh, what's the word? Um, encouraging, I guess? It's like, now you're like, oh yeah, this is what I'm creating, and you're just thinking about the character, right? So having that up all the time is um, Okay, so now what I'm going to do, we're going to append a sphere. All right? We're going to start creating our, our base body now. Um, this is probably what you all have come for. It's like, we don't care about file setup. I was like, fine. Fine. I see how it is. Whoa. Oh, Batacast, thank you very much for the sub. I appreciate that, friend. Welcome in. Um, I ended up uh, missing a large portion of the first workshop uh, stream, so I ended up watching it uh, for a few days afterwards just to understand what went on. That's fair. Coming in with the prime. Yeah. Enjoy, enjoy your sub emotes. All right, so let's get started. So, oops, I gotta turn symmetry on first. <laughs> All right. So the first thing I like to do is I like to get the, the body shape out. So we're gonna start with that. Um, don't worry about it being too refined just yet. Um, that's not too important. We're just kind of making sure that the proportions are good. Um, eventually we're gonna be merging this all together into one nice mesh um i have an alternate smooth brush now i forget exactly what changes i made to the brush to make it different i just remember i changed the uh, the, the curves on the brush um slightly i think it was this was it this let me just see what the smooth regular smooth brush does okay so this is a smooth brush ah yeah see see how i this is the regular smooth brush curve and my smooth light looks like this. Um, and doing that makes it so that the ponchos, thank you very much for the sub. Um, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Six months, that's, that's no small feat. Um, so this, is, um, this makes it so that the, the, the smooth is less intense and doesn't blow away all your details. It will soften things off, but it won't blow your details away. Um, which makes this brush uh, nice to work with, especially when you're working with low resolutions. Um, and I usually like to work at very low resolutions to start because it, it, it makes you focus on the major shapes. Um, so it's important, in my opinion, not to get too, too dense. I think a, a common thing that people... Oops, I keep doing that. Um, this is fine. Uh, let me just reset my preferences. Start cutting more. Okay. Um, oh, I should save this too. So, um, the issue uh, being that um, a lot of people decimate it, decimate it. I keep saying decimation instead of zero mesh. Well, zero mesh it very, very high. Um, and when you zero mesh it very high, it becomes difficult to work with because you're gonna end up with a, lot, a huge mess. All right, so. Um, Scythe Noob is now following. Thank you for the follow. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to start blocking out that. That was just a warning to say that I've, I've maxed out my history, <laughs> which is fine. Oh, Sky the Noob. Sorry about that. Thank you for correcting me. Okay, so we have that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another sphere. Um, I'll just use the regular insert sphere. We're just going to create a head. There we go. Again, not worrying about anything too much, just kind of getting the basics out. Mm -hmm. All right, so. Uh, do you see any advantage to using many subtools as opposed to one? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, you can ha one, you can have things at different subdivision levels. 
um, if something needs to have, be subdivided more times. Also, if you have um, everything combined as one mesh, uh, you can't have any mesh that, like you can't, each, each subtool of a tool has a maximum number of subdivisions it can have. Well, not subdivisions, but the maximum density it can have. So you can have more detail if you have it broken up. It's also just easier to select and highlight different things. Um, say you wanted to have some hard surface objects that were just using the uh, dynamic subdivision level, you could have a couple objects just, just have that. Um, so there's a, like, I, uh, yeah, subtools are great, folders are great, make sure you do that. <laughs> D, welcome in. Okay. All right, so that should do there for now. My thought is we're probably just going to get to the anatomy and the hair. I usually like to just start with the hair and body first because the hair is a big help in structuring the face. Um, hair, ears, all that stuff. I'll often get people asking me for feedback and they'll just give me like a bald head with no ears. And I'm like, you, kinda, you need all the structure there in order for me to kind of see um, and make sure that, the, that you're kind of matching the character. Um, because a lot of the character is sold in, in, in the hair and whatnot. Um, so, unless you're going for something super realistic, at which point, you know, there's a lot of subtle details that will differentiate someone. Um, but if you're going for something stylized, usually the shapes are pretty simplified. Um, and you're not going to get huge differences unless you're creating something dramatic, like someone with huge cheekbones or a huge nose or stuff like that. Um, but um, at the very least, you definitely want to have, like, all the features of the face because that it again it just sells the character it's important um other stuff i can i can go without for a little while and i kind of like to get the face figured out first because it kind of motivates you to keep going right it's just like oh yeah the face looks good if i start with the body i'm always worried it's like oh man i'm gonna put all this work into the body just to make the face look terrible <laughs> you know stuff like that um so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna insert a neck so we're gonna just take our cylinder tool I'm just gonna pop that in there there we go all right, um, and then I'm going to use my rotate tool, rotate that. I tend to flip back and forth with which tools I like to use. Sometimes I like to use this new gizmo that they have, but I often like to use the old uh, transpose tool. But for stuff like this, it, it was, it's actually pretty handy. Um, cool, we got that. Oh yeah. Um, Oh no, not yet. Uh, okay, so the next thing I want to do is I want to get the curved tubes in here. Um, the curved tubes I use, I use to, uh, to create the base limb. And the cool thing about the curved tubes tool is there's two scales. So there's this blue scale, and when you're off, there's the brush scale. The brush scale affects the size of the tube, and the blue scale uh, affects how much you can move it around. So if I have this scaled up, then I can say like, oh, I want to move part of it. But something is acting a little bit strange here, and I don't really know why. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so I've, I made a mistake here. Um, I don't know why it's doing that right now. Okay, well, normally that's how it would work. ZBrush is just acting a little bit weird right now. So instead what I'm gonna do is just move it normally. When you click off of your curve, it'll just snap it, and that's how it is. And then I'm just gonna move it around. But sometimes it's cleaner to move the blue brush around as opposed to this way, because then you get a little bit, uh, you can get a little bit of a mess this way. But it's okay. We'll we'll carry on work with what we got. All right. Uh, what is your best friend, Dynamesh or ZBrush? Um, you kind of. The thing is, ZBrush is is really great sculpting tool, but you, you kind of need the decimation tool if you're going to bring this, this, this model into any other software for baking and stuff. So um, I'd have to say that, that the, the Dynamesh is, is more important. Or sorry. Wait. Oh, have I been saying, I've been saying ZeroMesh this whole time and I meant Dynamesh. Didn't I? Yeah, I've been saying, Okay, well, well, we'll talk about Dynamesh in a minute. <laughs> oh my god. ZBrush is acting weird? Yeah, man. That's okay. Um, I'm just kind of placing the arms. That's pretty good. 
Um, also, this hand is going to be a big dragon hand eventually, but we'll, we'll start with a regular hand and we'll do that later. Because as soon as I introduce asymmetry, things get a little bit complicated. This asymmetry is also going to be a good thing to talk about later when we start doing retopo and stuff, because it's also going to cause big problems. <laughs> um, but it's okay. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll get it. We'll get it. Okay. And now what I want to do is I want to adjust this. I'm, I'm noticing here that um, this is a little bit higher. I kind of want to even that out. I'm going to pull this out for the shoulders a bit too. And again, we're not really uh, worrying about everything too much. I'm not getting any realistic anatomy or anything like that. It's just kind of working out the major shapes, um, proportions, and we'll, we'll, we'll figure out the rest after. Um, but I will get the kind of uh, rib cage going here. And just a forewarning, as I will be polishing this a bit off stream. Um, I mainly just want to get you guys uh, going with the process. I'm not going to take a huge deep dive into the anatomy uh, per se. I'm going to get a good amount done, um, but that's not really the, the point of this uh, this whole stream. It's mainly just to kind of like get your major shapes down and get an understanding of workflow and process. Um, anatomy is just a matter of finding images and references and, and getting that sorted. Um, obviously, I'm not going to pull up any references because that's, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, TOS uh, issues, right? I'm not, obviously not going to put photos of uh, naked people on the stream. Uh, Yeah, Cable calls me old a lot. He's a young lad. Uh, how do I turn the silhouette thing on the ZBrush in the corner? How do I, how do I turn the silhouette thing? It's on by default. Um, ZBrush just has it out of the box. Uh, I forget, I don't know how you turn it off actually. Um, preferences, maybe. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure how to turn it off. I've never tried. It might be this. No. It's probably in this, in this, in this tab somewhere. Um... My ZBrush did not have it. If you brought in, if you imported a custom UI, it's possible that it went away. Um, I have a weird question. I want to become a character model uh, artist, and I want to know if it's possible to have some feedback on my model from an experiment. Uh, experiment. Uh, artist like me. Um, you can definitely uh, get some feedback. Not right now, because we're doing a workshop, but um, you can always ping me. You can message me on Discord. I'm always happy to uh, give you some feedback. Um, are you trying to turn off the reference to cable, the tool cable? Um, I'm trying to turn it on, yeah. And hey, Bannon, welcome in. You came just in time for us to start blocking out some anatomy. All right, let's get some legs blocked in. Uh, there are other 3D artists as well, yes. It's a, definitely a good community for, uh, for 3D artists. I, I, I believe so. <laughs> <laughs> I try to make it be that way. All right, so I'm gonna put on transparency now. When you put on transparency by default, it looks like this, but I wanna turn off ghosting. And now I can see the body underneath. You might not be able to see it very well, like in my case. And in that case, what you do is you go to preferences, draw, um, and you can turn down the, or sorry, turn up the back opacity. No, no, it's the other way around, sorry. Turn down the front opacity. I always forget which one it is. There it is, okay, yeah. So you turn up the back opacity. And the more you turn it up, you can see it. Um, there we go. 
So now I can really see the drawing behind it. And I can ma match it a little bit better. And we'll get those feet on there later. Those legs. Yeah. Their preferences cam view. Uh, turn cam view on. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Telvin. All right. Just gonna pull that back. She's gonna have knees eventually. <laughs> She'll eventually have knees. I drew the knees in the wrong place. <laughs> it's funny. Like a lot of these things I can figure out in 3D space, but when I look at it in 2D, I do it wrong. Like I drew the knees like up up on the thigh. <laughs> I don't know what it is. But that's what I'm telling you. It's like you don't necessarily have to be good at drawing. You just kinda you can still figure it out even if the drawing isn't quite right. Um, but it's funny, funny to think about that. Yeah. I need to fix that butt. That butt's not quite right. <laughs> uh, it's the complete opposite for me. Maybe we should switch brains. <laughs> yeah. Half a brain, that's right. We trade, we, 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 uh, what's the word? We Frankenstein our brains. Right. Franken brains. Um, and eventually, what you're gonna want to do too is you're gonna uh, you're gonna want to like pull up some some references for anatomy and stuff like that as well. Make sure you find a lot of photo references. I actually forgot to pull up my photo references, so I don't have them on my other monitor. Um, I will be doing that in a minute. However, uh, we don't need to worry about that just yet because we're just doing some proportions. And a lot of this stuff I kind of know. Um, but when I start getting to the nitty gritty, I'll need those references. But we're not gonna get super nitty gritty for a while. Um, I usually don't refine the anatomy fully until the very, very end. I'll get things in a very nice place before I start doing the outfits, like the proportions are, are in a good place. It's uh, generally correct, but things will move around after I start blocking some clothing and stuff. Um, but we're getting, we're getting somewhere now. Okay. I think that the, the, the head is too low. Um, we share brain cells around here. Things be scarce, you know. I know. I only got one, just one. Uh, I kept an extra in my coat pocket, uh, but. But the fog ate it. <laughs> the dog ate it. <laughs> oh, that's no good. All right. Let's. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, add in some some blob hands. Um, I get a lot of people like commenting on my blob hands. <laughs> like, oh man, your your hands are all blobby. I'm like, yeah, they'll they'll be blobby for a while. <laughs> Um, but I, like, um, I've had people like say, oh yeah, the, your character no longer has fish hands. Yeah. <laughs> I've had different people mention that. It's very interesting. But, um, I usually keep the hands all combined as one big mesh because when you're working with decimation, decimation with Dynamesh, I keep doing that. Now we're calling it Dynamesh because it's, it is Dynamesh, Dynamesh. Um, when, uh, when you work with Dynamesh at a lower resolution, like I do, Everything just kind of welds together anyway. Uh, so you don't really want to worry about the individual fingers until um, your, your details are high enough. And then you can kind of go in there and, uh, and refine it. So we're not going to be finishing the hands today. The hands are, are going to be kind of soft and blobby for a while. Um, 
after this week we're going to be blocking or next week we're going to be blocking in clothing and whatnot and then after we have our clothing block out then we're going to revisit the hand so in two weeks we'll be doing a detailed pass on the anatomy um so right now we're just kind of getting things in a rough place and then we'll, we'll, we'll move forward from there um and again, I will get some stuff a little bit better off stream as well. Because I'm not going to waste your time. Um, me just showing like all the super, super high details isn't going to really help you much. The, the big thing, again, is just to find, find your references and figure it out. I will talk about major shapes and maybe things that you should look out for and things you should look into. Um, but um, I do recommend on your own time just kind of looking up some some references of anatomical images and, and refining your muscle structure. I will, of course, be going over your models as well if you want. Um, so that's what we created that folder for earlier. Um, so when it comes time to uh, review anatomy and stuff in the blockout, uh, we can do that. I will review uh, people's blockouts either next weekend or on our, our, our during the week stream, uh, whatever folks prefer. Um, I think maybe during the week is probably the best time because then we can focus on teaching new things uh, during our, our streams here. But I can cover a couple before um, before the next stream as well. Mittens, indeed. Dynamesh check, yes. Um, so you're going to have to look for those uh, things for two weeks more. What, like blocking stuff out? Um, we're going to be refining, we're going to be touching on anatomy for the next three weeks, yeah. Um, but we're not just doing that, we're going to be doing a number of things. Um, like today was about, you know, getting your files set up, getting your proportions down, um, and things like that. And keep in mind that things are still, um, subject to change, right? So I, I might move things around, um, once I have things in a, in a general place uh, that I'm happy with. Uh, like, you know, uh, in quotes, happy. Um, it takes a long time to actually be fully satisfied with the thing. Um, if you look at some of my uh, my previous models, you, you'll see there's a huge change be be between the uh, this initial kind of blobby mesh and the final. Uh, so just be wary of it. Don't be too precious about anything. Don't worry about it. Things will um, slowly drift together. Um, and that, that goes for your work as well, right? You want to make sure that you're not uh, worrying too much. Uh, Dean, Dean Thatcher is now following. Now you're following, right? Because if, uh, if you worry too much about it, then you're, you're never going to move forward and you're going to be stuck. It's just not ideal. Just kind of uh, keep it loose uh, and get some stuff going. Uh, and you can worry about refining it and making it prettier and prettier as you progress. Um, on that note, I never, I never really covered the design, um, but you'll notice that from, uh, from last week, I did make a lot of changes to the design. Well, it looks like I made a lot of changes, but it's actually not all that different from before. I just did another pass. So the same thing that we did last stream is I just kept drawing over the character over and over again until I, it was, and each time I would get it better and better. All I did this time is I, I looked up some references for some nicer posing, and I just drew it in a new pose. Same design, um, with some minor modifications, but pretty much the same, same design, and, um, and just kind of like pushed some, some shapes a little bit more. So it's, um, yeah, so again, like don't be discouraged about any step of the process. You can just, you just keep hitting it again and again and again, and every time you hit it, it'll get more and more polished. Um, and it'll get where you want it to be. Uh, thank you, Helen Beglin, for uh, sharing the uh, the HRE doc. Um, are you going for good old stuff? So, are you going to experiment uh, on this? I'm going to stay pretty true to my usual style because, again, I'm I'm teaching stuff right now, and if I try to explore too much, um, it will it's just going to make the whole process a little bit convoluted and confusing for everyone. So I'm not going to be going too outside of the range of what I normally do here. I'm probably, I'm just going to try to do it a little bit better. Maybe I'm going to push the anatomy a little bit more than I normally do, try to get that looking nicer. Because I do feel like my anatomy is one of my, my weaker um, 
aspects. So I'm I'm making sure that I'm gonna revisit. Um, but I I will um. I will I will try to like make sure that this is as as nice as it can be because uh, I want to make sure that you guys are um, getting something out of it. I never like seeing tutorials where the like the actual final result isn't necessarily all that high quality, right? Originally when I was doing this is like I thought, oh maybe I'll make some super simple character and just something super basic. Um but I want people trying to learn from this to be reassured that they can get somewhere. Right? Um if I did something that was simple and basic, they they might feel like it's not really um something you can learn from, right? Let me get some feet figured out. Her feet aren't super big. She's going to have a bit of a heel on her boot, so I'm lifting her feet up a little bit. I might play around with that height later. It's easy to move that stuff around. And see, this is what I was saying. Is her feet probably won't end up being planted at the very end because I'll be moving the legs around and the head around and all that stuff. So we will have to do one pass where we kind of just offset the character to be grounded at the very end of the model, or near the end at least. Probably just before the, the final refinement pass. And I hope folks aren't too annoyed about me doing stuff offline as well. Um, it takes a huge amount of time, right? So I'm not going to create a, uh, you know, like a 50 hour video of sculpting, right? Um, but I do want to make sure that I get as much information to you guys as possible uh, during our streams, right? So, you know, if, if you feel like you're, you're missing information that you want me to fill, in, fill you in on, um, you know, just let me know and I will, I will, I will oblige. But I want to make sure that, uh, again, that this is as helpful as possible. Twenty-four hour streams, yeah, that would be good. <laughs> that wouldn't be a good idea. Um, all right. So now, um, oh yeah, I want to get her ears in there, and her chest in there. Um, and then also the eyeballs are very important too. A lot of people will not put eyeballs in soon enough. I just put the eyes in there. <laughs> um, I'm still contemplating whether I want to give her disc eyes or actual spherical eyes, so we'll see. I'll start with the spheres, and then we'll, we'll see if I switch to discs later. Um, I'm on the fence about it. I'll think about it. She's got her nice little pointy ears. Nice little pointy ears. Not well, not so little. They stick out like a mile. But you can see like ears, eyes, all that stuff, they just really add structure to the face. They really frame the face, make it feel right. Also, just a heads up, everyone. I might, I might take about two minutes, two or three minutes to grab some tea in in a bit. Probably in like fifteen or so. We'll take a little quick tea break, intermission, and then come back. Um, last stream, I, I I missed my break, and at the end of it, I was just kind of dying. <laughs> like my my throat hurt, and I was had like a headache, and I was tired. Um, so. This time I will not make the same mistake, and I will 
take a, a short intermission. I, I had originally just wanted it so that it would be like one long string of video, um, but unfortunately, I kind of I need to stand up for a second. A tea break, indeed. Uh, I am hydrating. I do have water. How dare you, tea break? I know. Um, so what I'm probably going to do is um, I'll just throw the design up on the screen so anyone watching the VOD later. Um, just skip forward until the uh, the concept is taken down and we're back on the sculpt. But it'll probably be about two or three minutes. So it takes that long for the tea to heat up. <laughs> uh, well, it takes two minutes for the tea to heat up. So three minutes is, is generous. Uh, those ears are some Jack and Jack stuff, type stuff, and I love them. Yeah, that's kind of the vibes I was going for. I love, I love those kind of ears. Like whenever I have pointy ears, I always just like exaggerate them <laughs> a lot. Um, it's it's fun, uh, but they'll have like uh, they'll be kind of fluffy ears as well. So they won't be quite Jack and Jack's ears, but they silhouette wise, they are. I love Jack and Jack 3. I've only ever finished Jack 3, though. I never finished the other ones. Kind of sad. All right, so um, let's get some eyeballs in there. So I append a sphere for the eyeball here. And we're going to move that. Uh, the reason I like to use an appended sphere as opposed to like a drawn sphere because it's not necessarily spherical all the time. Another thing I like to do is uh, rotate this sphere. Um, so I go to deformation, uh, rotate in the X by 90. Oops, I rotate a little bit. There we go. It's a little bit finicky sometimes, but having it specifically 90 is important. Um, the, the reason I like to do this is because now when I do polyframe, I know where the center line of the eye is so I can line it up with the eyelids. Um, so if I ever need to match the eye up, I can just go into polyframe mode and I can see where the eye is positioned clearly. Um, that's very helpful. Let's scale that down. I'm not sure how big I want our eyes to be currently. Um, I will probably play around with it. You also notice I'm not rotating it. Um, I probably will rotate it eventually once I color it, but for now I won't. Uh, right now all I care about is the, the height position of it, um, but it will usually be rotated out in the Y kind of like this, right? But I wouldn't worry about that so much yet. Not yet anyway. Um, I want to make sure that the, the eye is a good distance back from the, from the, the nose. I'll probably move this around a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to pull this out a little. A bad habit that I have is making my characters with super flat faces, <laughs> um, which isn't necessarily bad, depending on the style you're going for, but I think it's not ideal. So I'm going to be um, pulling this face out a little bit so that it has more depth uh, than I would normally do. Okay. Um, and now what I want to do is go into transparency mode, make sure that uh, the eye is lined up on, oh, clearly it's not. Um, so we're going to throw this eye here and scale it down. Usually there's, um, as far as position goes, if you had a realistic face, the eyes would have one full eyeball in the middle. Um, so at this point what I can do is I can do a deformation in mirror and weld. Uh, mirror and weld. And turn on symmetry. All right, um, and now we can kind of figure this out. So 
Um, because their eyes are a little bit bigger than normal eyes, I have a little bit less than an eye gap in between, but it is something to keep in mind. Uh, it should be something along those lines. Um, glad I caught this a struggle when sculpting eyes. It's very, it's, it's, it's very, it can be very tricky for sure. Uh oh, I made a mistake. Hold on. Okay. You'll notice because I scaled it that I lost my center point on my, uh, sphere. Um, so what I want to actually do is I want to turn on local symmetry and then scale it. That way it's, it stays lined up. There we go. Cool. All right, so uh, that should be good. Great. Transparency mode. So now we have eyes in the general place. Um, when we start getting into more detail of the face, we can block this in. I probably put the eyes in a little bit too early. Not incredibly too much, but a little bit. Um, not that it was mattered when I put it in, it's just like I didn't need it just yet because I can't take advantage of it. Because <laughs> I can't actually sculpt eyes as of yet because I, I don't have the detail for it. And I don't want to dynamesh things just yet. It's too, too soon. Um, we will soon though. Um, I will give her a chest, obviously. So that's the next thing that we gotta do. Throw a couple spears in there. Um, I want to reset this, so I have to unlock it, reset. There. Oops. Oh, come on. Whatever. Oh, this is irritating. Uh, you already moved in ZBrush. I saw your sketch earlier, but uh, I'll be lurking during the course. All right. Also, welcome in, Joe. Um, do you uh, look at the size of your reference? I have, I look at the reference for when I'm making any object or any part of the character. So yes. Um, okay, so it's rough around the edges, um, to say the least, but uh, we also want to jump into perspective mode, uh, get into perspective sooner than later. Obviously everything is wrong, <laughs> um, but we have a general, a general body, which is good. Uh, I wouldn't say fast because this isn't good yet, but now what we're going to do is we're actually going to start subdividing this thing. So we're going to store a morph target, and we'll divide it once. So now I can kind of start refining a little bit, right? And start getting things into a little bit of a better place. Um, uh, MD Subuntu uh, is now following. Thank you for following. Uh, I'll definitely be checking out the bot on this one because I'm bummed I missed the block out shapes. You didn't miss much. Uh, we did. We haven't. We haven't been at it for too long. It, we spent. We spent an hour just setting up our scene. Um, so we haven't actually been blocking out for super long. But yeah, you'll you'll have the bots. So you're good. Um, all right, we're just gonna figure this out. Pull stuff in. Um, I was jumping into box modeling uh, because these spheres stress me out. I did not use these spheres. Um, I, I just appended a sphere 
for the body and then added a sphere for the head and then used curved tubes for the limbs. I do not use these spheres because I don't like them either. <clears throat> Hey, Courtney. Yes. Dragon Balls? No. No worries, Joe. We'll probably start blocking out a little bit of the rib cage some more. <laughs> the good thing about keeping in parts like this is now I can I can hide different aspects of it, right? So like get the uh, the abdomen going a little bit. Because even like even because the even though the character has breasts, there's still the the, the same muscle structure underneath. So it's kind of good to figure that out. Um, because it's just kind of like a fatty tissue that sits on top, right? Um, okay, so I'm going to pull this out. Uh, the big thing is that just figuring out like how the, uh, how the arm interlocks with the, uh, the abdomen and the deltoid. In the, uh, dude, what's this called again? The trapezius. I know, I know. Trapezius. And the external oblique, the thing that I couldn't remember yesterday. Or the day before? I forget. Yeah. Anyway. The external oblique. The external oblique actually has, it, it stretches out like this. Um, but it has kind of like a, a, a bulky area at the bottom that kind of sits on top of the, uh, the pelvis. The iliac crest. See, I remember names, sort of. Um, we also have like uh like the stomach area. Uh, figuring out the, the belly button and stuff like that. Uh she needs to be ripped. Yeah, she'll she'll be somewhat muscular for sure. <laughs> Love handles. Yeah, that's right. Times it. I think this is a good good moment to take a quick break to grab some tea. Yeah. Um. Really go over muscles. I'm a bee in anatomy hell. <laughs> yeah. I'll do. Like I'll go over it as much as I can. Like obviously I'm not gonna. I don't. Um. I won't be able to go to like super high detail clearly because, you know, I I don't. I'm 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 a student just like the rest of you, right? I'm I'm always learning and I don't necessarily remember everything. <laughs> and I forget the names of stuff. Like I know that there's this muscle here and I forget what it's called. I know that this is there and then this is the trapezius and I also called this the wrong thing. <laughs> this is not the this is not the trapezius. Uh anyway, this is the trapezius and it goes down to here. Oh boy. Then we got our deltoids which hook up underneath, right? They connect there. Um, I do recommend having uh, a, like some some reference, which I do not have right now, but that's uh, okay. Um, Kalish, welcome in. Uh, the fun of uh, handing things off, happy with uh, what you did, and then being told by the client, thanks, I hate it, please redo it. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh, I've had that feeling. It's not fun.
It's the life of an artist. I'm figuring out some of the uh I see. A little bit of the uh I, I see I don't even remember what these muscles are called. But I know that there's a muscle that wraps around there and then connects up here to the elbow. And then you have like three muscles that go down here, and then another that kind of wraps around this way. Um, right, we got our doing some clavicles. Some of the clads, clads, clads. Uh, this is another thing that I do a lot, which is probably not the best thing. Is I have the spells to go a little bit too far. It's a very uh, large head anime thing to do, where you have this giant head and tiny neck, so then the, the head has to kind of uh, protrude a lot. is isn't necessarily the best thing. Uh, so we're going to just pull that in, or pull the neck out to kind of match it a little bit more. For a little bit more chin. And now that we have a little bit more detail on the face too, we can start refining that a little bit. You'll notice I'm jumping around a lot too, right? I haven't stuck in one place for too long. Um, I, I constantly am moving around, hitting everything um, to kind of make sure that it gets to a good place. And that's another reason why I'm saying that you're probably gonna to wanna to go somewhere else if you wanna look specifically about anatomy. Because a lot of anatomy uh, videos, they're gonna pick one area and they're gonna just hammer onto that, but that's not what I wanna do here. I wanna talk about process. And I'm talking about like how I go about it because a lot of things you can kind of just you can learn in so many ways, and I want to I want to bring something that obviously only I can bring, which is my specific way of doing things, right? Um, and I think that's very important. Uh, This is my biceps, points at elbows. That's right. <laughs> I just call everything the muscle. Yeah. I'm telling your art director, you know what? That's fine. I can I can make whatever style I like. This isn't work. But again, I haven't 100% uh, decided whether I want to have like a more, um, you know, this guy approach or the actual sculpted proper eyes. I say proper, but that's not really true. Whatever style you're going for. I mean, anatomical, I guess. Spherical eyes. kind of pulling that out a little bit. Again, I still don't have enough detail here to go really, or sorry, enough uh, density to go super detailed here. And that's why I don't subdivide my model too much because like, otherwise I would just go home on this and just kind of just uh, keep working on the face and nothing else. But this kind of forces me to be like, I can't, I, I couldn't do more on this if I tried. Because <laughs> it's just, there's no, there's no, there's no geo, geo there for me to work with. Um, so, yeah. Uh, how long did it take you to learn how to uh, character model? I want to learn, but it stresses me out. To actually learn how to do it, it took me like a year. To get good at it, to get to my current level took me about six years. Um, I would say. Uh, I was looking at the timeline. Are we going to do weapons next week? No, weapons will be the last thing. Um, props and weapons will be the last thing that we do. Uh, we're going to be blocking out clothing next week. Uh, we're going to do hard surface next week. Maybe it's the right time for weapons. Maybe. If there's time, but I doubt it. Uh, 
Um, all right, no worries, Tobin. To get good, well, I'm still working on it. It takes time. Really want to get this divot. <laughs> I want to get this 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 kind of muscle here. It twists, right? So you kind of get this kind of crease at the uh, on the inside of the arm. Um, sometimes I, I, this is a stylistic thing I like to do, but realistically, this this part of the arm is very flat. But sometimes I'll make it a little bit thicker so that it kind of has more volume to it. It depends on what what look I'm going for, obviously, but. Um, I, I usually stray away from reality there and make the, the arm a little bit more tube-like than it realistically would be. Because I kind of like that shape language. But I want to make sure that when I'm doing stuff that you know that, you know when I'm breaking the rules. Right? And you'll notice that this mesh is a complete disaster, right? Like, this mesh is just like blobbing over that. Um, and that, obviously, I'm not going to go into any super details right now because we are we are still very early in the process. Um, I want to get this rib cage a little bit more figured out. Uh, so you get the rib cage that goes like that. And that's how you get those little those little cre creases above the abdomen. Um, it's from that rib cage which kind of sits there. Um, but then you also have like a muscle that's sitting here, and then muscles that go like that across. Um, I just didn't see them in the timeline. Okay, yeah. I didn't really put them in specifically um, because when I originally created that, I didn't didn't know that I'd be giving my character a weapon. <laughs> so it's not really in the timeline, but we'll do it near the end. It won't be next week, though. It'll probably be during one of our, our refinement weeks because we're going to have two weeks of refinement. And I'll probably use one of those streams to talk about uh, weapons and stuff. Um, because obviously that's that, that one week, otherwise that one week we wouldn't have a class anyway. Um, because, um, you know, there's nothing new to teach. Like I'll probably, I'll still stream this, but it, it won't be a VOD because there's nothing new being taught. Um, many people struggle because they don't know about subdivision needed to get the detail. Yeah, that's very, very common. Um, hey, Dragon Lit, how are you doing? I think it's nice to add it for sure, because um, weapons, yeah. So I'll probably cover that during one of the re refinement weeks, because there won't be anything new for me to show that week anyway. Otherwise. It's a good idea. And again, I'm still pretty flexible about timelines. So if we come to next week and then people are still, you know, struggling with refinement or with blockouts and stuff, like I can always give extra time. Um, that said, I don't want people to spend too much time on, like, or sorry, like worry about the, the refinement too much because we're going to have two weeks of polish, right? So, um, Get things in a pretty decent place, and then we can go from there, right? Don't be, don't be too worried about it. We're gonna have four weeks of total of uh, of doing the sculpting, um, which should be enough. Um, I usually get about a week and a week or so to do the model during my day jobs, or not like the whole model, but doing like the sculpting stuff. So. A week or a week and a half, I guess. Not including the times when we have to like redo stuff or things like that, because that happens a lot. Like the initial pass, I should say. Version one of the model. 
Then we have to redo it like three or four times. Um, anything about this workshop best be a VOD? I suppose so. But I, yeah, I guess I could like on uh, during the refinement leaks. I can like even if I'm just doing the same stuff, I could still save it. Um, but I don't want to. Like, no one's really going to want to watch a, a vod that just doesn't cover any new content, um, especially from what I've seen from my previous vod. Is people tend to stop watching after the first five minutes. <laughs> so um, based off of that, I can kind of kind of guess what people might want to see and might not care about. Um, you'll also notice that as I'm working on this, I'm still in perspective mode. I keep perspective mode all the time on. Um, a lot of people turn it off often. The only time I turn it off is if I need to like slice something or I need it to be completely flat um, in the plane, um, like the bottom of the shoes, and I'm just using the slice tool to make sure that it's cut properly. Um, that's when I'll go into perspective mode. Or if I'm just checking my reference, then I'll be like, oh yeah, let's see if I'm still on model, then I can do that. But then I, immediately after I'm done, I switch back to perspective. Um, because your model is going to be viewed in perspective, it's not going to be viewed in orthographic. Um, and what ends up happening if you're modeling in orthographic view is you start subconsciously working in the perspective into your sculpt. And then when you put perspective on, you get this weird double perspective and it's very jarring. <laughs> so make sure that you have perspective on. Um, even if you ha if we had unlimited weeks, we will never be as cool as you. And that's not true at all. Uh, anything can be achieved with time. Uh, are you going to have a lecture on prepping it for engine? Yes. We're going to do both. We're going to or we're going to do three things. We're going to throw it into Unity, Marmoset, and Sketchfab. At the end. Um, and I'm even going to do a little bit of scripting, and we're going to get the character moving um, so that they'll switch between idle and walk, and you can put in inputs, and they'll move around. Um, I always ended up uh, on uh, working with uh, one or the other. I forget to turn it back on or off. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's something to be conscientious of, for sure. Um, you could just, uh, do it as a speed sculpt VOD, uh, like just treat, oh yeah. And then, uh, just muted, it would toss some music over top just so folks can clearly see the, yeah, that's true. Yep. Scripting. Very, very basic though. Um, I'm keeping everything in this on the technical side on a very, very basic level. Cause this is more tailored for artists who want to kind of make their own things. And I want to keep things at a very like beginner friendly level um, on the tech side at least. Um, so even the rig, I'm not going to be using any of my fancy tools. It's not going to have a stretchy rig or anything like that. It's going to be like a, a nice basic IK arm, sorry, IK leg FK arm rig. Um, so that's where we're going to be going with that. We're going to go over some animation. Um, and we're going to talk about doing idols and a walk cycle. So. There's 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 lots there's lots of stuff to come, there's lots of stuff to come. But keep in mind, we're going to be doing this for a couple months, so that's going to be for, that's not going to be for a while. <laughs> it's going to be a couple months before we get there. Why Marmosets? What's wrong with the standard renderer? What do you mean by standard renderer? There's no standard renderer. <laughs> There's no standard. <laughs> Set the standard. All right, guys, I'm going to grab some tea real quick. So I'm going to, oh boy, this looks terrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. 
Uh, yeah, you guys will just have to bear with me for a while because this will look bad for a while. Um, just, just be okay with that. Um, what kind of tea? It's gonna be chai. chai tea. I'm, I'm just gonna put up the concept art. Oops. Um, I'm gonna put the concept art here, uh, so that you know people aren't like, "What the heck's going on?" Um, I'm just gonna. All right, Clip is the best. I love Clip. All right, I'll be right back, guys. Bear with me.
All right, thank you for your patience, everyone. We're back. Okay. Getting fee? I don't know where you get the fee from. All right, um, I just like doing art on a timer because it's a nice easy test and gauge uh, for how you're arting for the day. And if it looks bad, uh, it was just a sketch. I only have 30 minutes. Yeah, that's always nice. I like the, uh, the mentality of just kind of, it's a sketch and it doesn't matter. The T is an F, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there's a lot of other letters that looks more off than the F. Um, I was just surprised the F was the problem. Okay, we're back in it. All right. Oh, it's still sore though now. Talking a lot. Okay. I drink more water. Uh, doesn't Maya come with Arnold? Sure, um, but I have an older version of Maya that does not have Arnold. And also this is a game render, um, so we're rendering in real time. And I get better renders out of uh, Marmoset than, than the game engine because it's more um, tailored. Uh, or more like, um, like it's a, a, an enclosed space, so you get more uh, polish. Hey Kurta, how are you doing? What was the concept from? Um, I made the concept, so it's, it's not from anything. Man, my throat's killing me. Right. It's from the brain, indeed. Hi, uh, hello. Or, Sizen? <laughs> In my 2020, the new GPU Arnold uh, optimizing real time rendering. Yeah, sure. I mean, Arnold is a GPU renderer, so technically yes, but it's not like we're trying to, we're making stuff for games, right? So it's going in a game engine, it's not for Maya. Also, not everyone uh, watching this has Maya, because a lot of people I'm sure are using Blender. Pretty cool, thank you. Also, I looked it up, this is the Latissimus door sign. Uh, I forgot the name of it, but that's what it's called. Um, also, oh man, let me just remember what the name of these guys are. I have a, a very nice anatomy book called Classic Human Anatomy by uh, Valerie L. Ginslow. Um, and I highly recommend the book. I, I'll probably post it in the Discord for you guys. Ah, oh, that's it. These are the Terry's Major and Terry's Minor. That's it. I didn't remember, but that's what they're called. Uh, Redshift is, yeah. Redshift is more GPU, but Arnold's still. That's right, I did pull out a book on the Line Line Workshop. I'm not afraid to admit it. I forgot the name of the muscle, so I looked in my book. I knew that muscle was there, then. I just couldn't remember what it's called. You shouldn't be afraid to use references when you need it. Reading a book? Oh. Well, I am a nerd, so there's no denying that. But the nice thing about a book is you, you know exactly what you're getting and where it is. And it's much easier to look through. When everything is compiled together. Uh, you can see the book. We would never know. Yes, it's true. 
But I think it's important for you to know. If I don't remember something, I look it up. Um, pride, don't be, don't, don't worry about your pride. Verification needs a little bit more volume. I'm not afraid of reference, I'm afraid of books. <laughs> Pride, what is that? You say that. <laughs> maybe a little bit quiet for a little bit, maybe. Um, yeah, okay. Oops. Um, where's the thing? Yeah, I made her head a little bit too big. Cool, Michelle is a bit. So that's the thing to consider too is uh, the shoulders are about, normally about three heads wide, I think. So, yeah, three heads wide. Obviously, I'm, I'm exaggerating. Um, so the head's a little bit bigger. But, you know, on a realistic person, it's about three heads. Um, for me, it's probably about two. Is it really three heads? I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah, it is it's three heads. So what I want to do now is I want to get um, some of her hair and stuff blocked out. Uh, welcome back, Teldon. So to make hair, um, what I normally do is, um, is I'll just extract pieces from the head. Um, and like I said before, I, I find it very important to kind of get uh, get a base going. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy or clean or anything, but it, just enough to get an idea of what's going to be there. Yeah. Extract that. Oh, that's too much. Too little. <laughs> That'll do it. Okay. And I can probably hide the uh, the reference image now. I don't need it there. It's making it hard for me to rotate around the character. I have the proportions in a general place, so I'm I'm pretty good to go. If I feel like I'm I'm going off model, I can pull it up again. But I, at this point, I'm I'm pretty good to go. Uh, I and I'll even probably deviate from the drawing on purpose uh, uh, at a point. See, now I can actually have a, a nice value of Danimesh. So this is what I was saying. So if I had not adjusted the scale of the scene like I did before, I probably would have to be at like 32 or 8 in order to get a decimation that's reasonable. And that's as low as I can go. Now I have to actually get up here and at a reasonable level to decimate it. 
See, now it's like, you know, now I have a bit of a range to play with. It's good. I'm not going to worry about the, the braid quite so much just yet, I don't think, um, because I can still, I just need enough to frame her head, right? And I'm not even worrying about uh, making it uh, clean, like I said before, either. Um, I just want to make sure that I have everything that she needs all the components of her hair. This goes to the side. Um, probably should stick out a little bit. I'm also, see now as soon as I block out the hair, I can kind of see that like the top of her head's a little bulbous. Her eyes are probably too big. Um, I can probably scale these down a little bit. Move these inwards a little. Oh, that's irritating too. Okay. Airpod. Yeah, it's you know it's it's nothing right now, um, but we're we're gonna figure it out. Oh yeah, I wanna make sure back face masking is on. Uh, I have a custom, oops, um, I have a custom UI, so your back face masking button isn't going to be there. I'm trying to remember where it actually is normally. Um, I can't remember where, uh, where, it, where it normally is, unfortunately. Um, but it won't be there. Might be in the brush settings. Um, yeah, I'm, unfortunately, I'm not sure. Um, but it is something that uh, we want to check for. Uh, <clears throat> auto masking, yeah. Uh, um, Susan Nolita is not buying anything for Bali. Oh, will it? Oh, yeah, J. Crew with all the facts. He should be teaching, not me. Um, brush auto masking. Oh, it wasn't there. Wow, I'm blind. There it is. Thank you. It's been a long time since I've uh, made this custom interface. I made it like a, eight years ago. <laughs> so I don't really remember where all the tools initially were. Getting some shapes in there. I'm in Dynamesh, so I can Dynamesh this again. Um, for people who don't really know about Dynamesh, essentially if you control, click, and drag, it'll just Dynamesh it again, um, instead of having to push the button every time.
I saw a cable. I, I saw it. No need to. No need to worry. But thank you. Appreciate it. Sorry, I'm a little bit quiet again, but right now it's it's just a matter of uh, pulling out shapes. There's really much to discuss, but I'm just trying to find the major forms. And already this 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 starts to feel more like the character. Um, obviously, you got to get like the horns and stuff in there, but um, it's it's very hard to kind of judge a character until you have everything in place, right? Um, and it's better to kind of get things blocked out at this stage before you have everything super refined. Because when you have everything super refined, it's hard to make changes. And it's also very hard to see what's wrong, right? So if you have a super detailed, um, super detailed mesh, it, you have a whole bunch of things that your mind has to parse through. And you're like, is, it, is this the problem? Is this the problem? But right now, all we have are major shapes. Um, you could even like go into flat view. Oops flat view and start like figuring stuff out like that um, but there's a number of things right why can't I uh oh what's going on here um, <laughs> okay that was weird I don't know why it, it kind of freaked out like that maybe if I do it this way okay Use this, not not the flat preview, because the flat preview clearly is not working properly. Hmm. Uh, gonna model the tail with a straight position? Straight position, yeah. Uh, and pose it with transfer. No, I'm gonna. Pose it after she's rigged. Um, the, the, the tail will be straight up until the very end. Same thing goes with the cape and her, and her uh, braid. You said your character is six feet tall. Yeah, she's six feet tall. Just slowly figuring out the silhouette. See, now that I have things to reference, it's much easier to structure the face. Look, how, like, because now I know. Okay, the nose is too big. The nose needs to be higher. I need more space for the mouth. Like, as soon as you start getting these features in there, right? Then you start. You're you're able to figure things out. Like, don't don't worry about it too early, right? Also, the geometry is all jacked up here. Um, so <laughs> getting this really slanted mouth. It's okay. I'm probably going to subdivide her one more time. And this is going to be the last subdivision level before I dynamesh it all together. Um, yeah. I want to start getting some, some of the face a little bit further. Like I said, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, you got to get everything. Like, but like, um, I like to just make uh, the face look pretty nice before everything else because it kind of solidifies it, it kind of builds my confidence a little bit um so that you kind of got to balance that too it's like you want to make sure that you're feeling happy with what you're making um but you also want to make sure that you're making progress so you don't want to like completely disregard everything but um it's okay to just say like oh yeah i kind of want to get this to a nice nice place to kind of feel good about myself you know Lower that a bit. Um, that's about 180 centimeters. Yep. I'm gonna make yours 165. All right. If you look at her from a weird angle, she looks like Zelda there. Yeah, a little bit. I have a, a bit of the same face syndrome going on for sure, um, and I'm trying to work my way out of that.
I'm starting to walk in some more details here. There's a little crevice underneath the eye there. You can get some eyelids going on. Yeah, those will look a little bit weird for a while, but at least they're there. Got kind of the cat-shaped eyes, too. When I when we get to the retopo phase, um, which will be during our, our polish, um, because we do like a sculpt retopo, uh, we'll be able to get cleaner eyelids and stuff like that. But for now, it doesn't matter. Um, if your same face syndrome is Zelda, that is a good one. <laughs> yeah, not, not the worst, I suppose. Um, but I do want to make sure that my characters have, uh, you know, some uniqueness to them, even if it's just a little bit. Uh, I'm working in like the corners of the mouth as well. All right, so I like to pull that back a little bit um, and clean it up a little. Um, so the idea is you have um, you have your avicular sores, obviously, but um, you have this kind of like a little bit of a muscle breakup. Um, I do highly recommend like, looking into the more nitty gritty details of. Uh, of, an, uh, of anatomy, like I'm not getting into the super details because like I don't feel um, I'm the best source for that. You know, let's welcome in. So one thing to be very careful of is kind of like the, the fish mouth going on, right? So I have a little bit of that going on. And that's usually when you just don't have enough, you don't have enough volume. Like it's just, it, it becomes, like you have this very sharp cutoff of the mouth. So you wanna make sure that you kind of like work in this, the, the muscle structure there. You have that little, little bulge at the corner of the mouth um, so that it's not just sharp cut off. That's never, uh, Never a good look. <laughs> I'll use the pinch brush a little bit, kind of emphasize the, that, that line. Um, not necessarily the best idea because I lose detail from elsewhere, but um, it's just so that I can kind of uh, get an idea of what things are looking like, uh, or like adding, adding sharpness where I need it. We're starting to see a face now, even if it's not the right face. Um, we're seeing a face. And I'm not worried about the mouth being sealed just yet. Again, when we go into polish, that's when we're going to break the mouth, uh, open the mouth. Okay. Um, so just something to keep in mind. I don't care about that right now. Um, I find it easier to figure out the face when the mouth is closed. And once I figured out the face, I can open it. Um, and feel a little bit more confident about it. So that's kind of how I'm approaching it right now. Just a heads up, you're starting to speak uh, low. Oh yeah, my throat's really hurting. Um, sorry. <laughs> Um, I'm doing my best. I don't normally talk this much. I'm gonna grab a little bit more water. But thank you for the heads up. If your throat's going haywire, no worries. Yeah, yeah. 
just gonna do my best. Oh man, this looks really bad. <laughs> but it's okay. Um, kind of how it goes. You gotta bear with the uh, the bad for a little while. I think her face is supposed to be a little bit softer. Uh, push the mouth a little bit. So another thing I'm missing is that kind of uh, that the lip kind of pulls back and then pulls out of the bottom. But I don't really have enough geometry to really go deep with it. Uh, I need to watch the VOD. I forgot uh, the part at the beginning. I set up, uh, to set up the zebra shell. Oh, okay. Yeah, no worries. I missed the beginning, so I'll watch the VOD too. Yeah, yeah. No worries. It'll be there for you. You didn't miss too, too much. Just kind of, oops. Dropped in some stuff. I also want to get some eyebrows in there sooner than later. Another issue that I normally have is I usually create this really deep brow. Not necessarily the right thing. The nose needs to be a little bit smaller and the mouth needs to be a bit smaller, I think. I think it's pulled out a little bit too much. I'm gonna soften up that chin. Um, you set up the scale in Maya, brought it over to ZBrush. Super important scale. Yeah, there is important stuff in there, for sure. Um, at least in my opinion. And hey, Mathieu, welcome in. How are you doing, friend? Um, so by next stream during the week, I will have at least the base start uh, done for you to critique. That was good. That's the plan. That's what I'm, I'm hoping you guys will have ready. That's your homework. <laughs> your homework is to have um, just a, a rough, uh, rough body complete with your general proportions, and we can, we can talk about that. Yes. You thought you were you thought you were getting that scot free, did you? Don't call it homework. <laughs> what do you want me to call it? Your mission if you choose to accept it? You can call it that. Fun time. Everybody forgets homework, I know. That's on you though. I'm starting to lean towards the disc guys the more I think about it. Um, but maybe not, maybe not. We'll, we'll carry on with this first. It's been a long time since I've done non-disc guys outside of work, so maybe I should uh, not do disc guys. That's the other thing about disc guys too, is it's very easy to fall into that same face. Well, that's not true. No, that's a lot. You can create some very interesting eye shapes with the disc guys. But it's very common for people to not do that. Including myself. Oh. 
pull that back a little bit. Feel like she has some form of cheekbone. <clears throat> right now she doesn't. Build that up. It's very important to rotate around your model a lot and make sure that um, you're getting some differences in shape. But anyway, it's starting to look like something, which is good. I haven't saved yet today. Um, I should probably do that. Seems to go along. <laughs> Take this quest for the week. That's right. I'm gonna soften that up a bit. It doesn't have a very harsh nose. It's pretty, pretty soft. I want to give her that kind of like uh, curly lip. <laughs> uh, after the workshop is done, we can all pose the model in sort of like a group selfie. That would be fun. You guys want to send me the final model? I can do like a, a big old Marmoset render with everybody in it. Hmm. My class did that, it was fun? All right. That sounds like a good idea then. I'm not liking uh liking the eye at all. But again, we're gonna be we're gonna be refining and revisiting this a lot for a while. Um, also, she doesn't have eyelashes or eyebrows. I highly recommend getting those in there really early too. We're gonna to get those in. Not that thick, <laughs> but it, it really makes a huge difference, um, and it's not to be taken lightly. And I usually like to do a nice little zebra mesh on this. We keep groups. And so then we can just position this. I just store a morph target. I don't really need to. I do. I don't know if everyone has this issue too, um, but sometimes ZBrush will get like sticky keys. Um, so if you try to move stuff, it'll just stick. Um, and to fix that, you just hit the home key and then come back and it'll be good. That's why you sometimes see my home menu pop up. I thought I'd mention that. I'm going to hide that here. Those eyebrows in a decent place. That poop selfie. Yes. Uh, it's gonna be fun looking at all the styles collide. <laughs> yeah, it'll be a little bit. It'll be a little bit janky for sure. Um, but it'll be fun janky. It is. It is able to be pulled off if you look at like Super Smash Brothers, for instance. So, like the characters are are often in different styles. Like each game has their own style. 
is kind of cool, but it's still kind of, it's still sort of worse to go back. I'm gonna put dynamic on. down a bit. Put that onto the brow line. Maybe polish it a little. Well, it doesn't have to be super clean just yet. I'll be moving stuff around so there's no real reason to make it super polished. Just enough so that it's uh, clear, you know? Also make it darker. Color fill object. I just make the eyebrows a bit darker so that you can see them. And you can go about this in different ways too. Like if you're going for something more realistic, obviously you're not gonna have geometry as eyebrows. I'd maybe still put them in for as a placeholder so that you can kind of get a feel for the face. Um but um yeah, for realistic stuff, you, you probably don't do that. Uh, you can emphasize the brow more just by sculpting in the muscle structure. Um, I used to get that but uh, a lot, but I don't get it anymore. Not sure why. Bug, oh. No. I still get it a lot. Mind you, I haven't upgraded to the latest ZBrush yet. I'm still in 2020. I hate upgrading because it just takes time to set up. And you're never sure if all your settings are transferred. And uh, I'll do it eventually. I'll do it eventually. Probably not until after the workshop, though. But we'll see. Uh, although that might be a problem because if people are working in 2021, that means I might not be able to open their Z tools. Uh, just a heads up. So you might have to give me like an OBJ or something. Or an FBX. Um, if we send in our files, do you want us to send in OBJs? Since, yeah, that's OBJs or an FBX would be best. Um, I could upgrade ZBrush, but I just, just don't want to do that right now. Uh, it make my life difficult. Although I have to upgrade it eventually because we're using the latest one at work. So I've just been putting it off for a long time. The upgrader makes it a ton easier. Oh, that's the thing. I didn't even know that was a thing. Um, you can just click that. It's the same. It's in the folder. Oh, well then, that might be a game changer for me. I would still have to upgrade my tablet settings though to match the new ZBrush. Probably. You also want to make sure that your eyelids have enough width. Mine don't right now. Make sure that you line up with the sphere. That's why it's good to get that eye, eye sphere in early. Um, you kind of want to make sure that um, you're kind of hitting space. Another very common issue that people will do is they'll make the they'll pull this out way too much. And then you see the whole side of the eye, and that's because they just don't have a sphere in there. They haven't figured it out. Um, your eye, the inside corner of your eye is actually almost 
lined up with your outside corner. It goes a little bit less deep, but still pretty deep. Um, so something to keep in mind. Cool, cool, cool. We're gonna get some eyelashes on there too. Kind of just get a, a little bit better of an idea of the eye shape. Um, just grab it like that. Uh, that'll do. Yeah. Doesn't have to be perfect. Again, like I say, it it's uh, it's all gonna be replaced at the end anyway. Um, but it's good to get everything kind of blocked in, in in there so that you can kind of figure stuff out. And I usually, I, I like to use the Z remesh on uh, the eyelashes and the eyebrows. You get something a little bit cleaner to work with. So are folks following along or we're just uh, watching in to, to execute later? <laughs> Curious if uh, anyone else has started blocking out their characters. Uh, will the eyelashes be a separate object? Yes. Um, I'm still trying to uh, block out my body. Okay, cool. Working on the blackout? Awesome. I'm rather slow uh, mover to sculpt. It takes a very long time. <laughs> I am, but coincidentally, all right. Uh, I'm lurking at the anime. That's fine. Also, hey, Brandon, I don't believe I said hi earlier. I hope uh, you're having a good one. I started not uh, long ago, but I'm uh, going in to make corrections as I watch. Okay, cool. So now we have uh, something blocked in. Good. Maybe start refining the uh, jaw a little bit. Um, 
I missed the part of it, uh, so I'm gonna rewatch. Cool. Yeah, I, I talk a lot about scene setup and scale and stuff like that um, at the beginning. We spent the first hour just kind of getting everything formatted and, and ready to go. Ooh, I don't like that. Don't forget to rotate around your model because you might change something and then just flip around to see that you made it a whole lot worse. Kind of working in the uh, those uh, side muscles or whatever they're called. <laughs> the, um... Oh yeah, it's turned on that side. <laughs> I'm sure that people who really know their stuff are just cringing. Like, look, I know, I know that muscle is there. I just don't remember what it's called. We can get our trapezius a little bit more refined. Um, so that kind of sits there, and we get this kind of crevice triangle here. Sternomastoid, that's right. This is this guy. It kind of like tapers off into two strands. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> I looked it up. So that I, I could at least tell you guys what it is. Usually I don't care what the name is. I should care, I guess, but normally I don't really care all that much. Um, I think the, the head is uh, quite big, don't you think? Uh, I don't know. Not really. Realistically, yes. Um, stylistically, not really. Realistically, uh, her head is like way, way, way too big. Well, not so much her head is too big, but her shoulders are too thin, right? Um, but I'm exaggerating. There you go. I do, her eyes though are, are pissing me off. Um, I think her eyes need to be smaller still. Eyes are too high. Forward. And again, this is why I say have eyeballs in there, because you can really get a better idea of what's wrong and why, right? Hey, Sculpt, how are you doing? Um, I think uh, that was uh, one struggle I had when making Sally's character. I hesitate in exaggerating proportions, yeah. But it goes both ways too. Like if I try to do something realistic, it, it, it becomes a little bit overly stylized because it's just what I'm used to. Um, so. uh oh. Uh-oh. Um. Oh, oh, guys. Are you still there? Okay. Keep brush stopped working. 
Oh, okay. Whew. Let's save now. <laughs> All right. I thought my computer froze. It's like, oh no. Just stopped registering everything. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this is bad. <laughs> All right, glad you guys are still here. Oh, my pen stopped working. Okay, so ZBrush is fine. My tablet is, is not working anymore. It just stopped. Okay. Well, I have to restart ZBrush now. To say this again because of paranoia. Close it. Uh, here. Sorry about that. Service. Service. Uh, and then Wacom tablet, whatever. Restart. It's brand new, I bought it this year. It's not broken, it just disconnected. My old tablet broke um, this year, or in 2020, so I had to order a new one. Yeah. Anyway, we're fine. We're fine, we just had to restart the thing. Let's drop her back on the canvas, edit. Whoa, Queensman, thank you for the sub. Thank you very much. Oh wait, it was Brandon. Brandon gifted a sub. Thank you, Brandon, for gifting that sub. That is very kind of you. Um, I really appreciate it. Didn't you say once that you had like three, I do. I still have three Cintiqs lying around the house. I have my old broken one. I had the one I nabbed from work, which was brutally heavy, <laughs> but I had to carry it back here. Um, to use until uh, my new tablet came in, which I now have. You mean the broken one? It's not usable. I don't know what you'd do it with it. It's like, oh, it's just a glorified monitor now. Uh, just forcing my friend to sub, nothing to see here. <laughs> Fair. Give me the not broken one, no. These are expensive. Uh, just had my vaccine, I'm uh, part of the AstraZeneca gang now. That's good, that's good. Get yourself vaccinated. Congratulations. You are now the future. Side effects feel real weird though. What is this image? I'll have to check that out later after. Send it to me after we're done with the uh, workshop. <laughs> um, wasn't the vaccine uh, for forbidden in Europe? Maybe, I don't know. Banging around upstairs, I can hear him thumping on the floors. There 
they're coming. Let's see. But they'll never find me. They can try all they like, but they'll never find me. Kind of just working in the abdomen a little bit. Kind of like a peanut shape. I got my, my smooth brush. I was like, why is my smooth brush not working? It's because I have the wrong one. And I do want to fix that upper lip. It's, it's a little bit swollen, I think. It's got to come back a little. It's better. And that's, of course, going to vary uh, depending on um, what uh, what the race of your character is, right? Ethnicity, I guess is a better word. Um, you sculpting your character from the, your concept drawing? Yes, that's right. Um, I'm gonna. Be part of the Sinova gang. All right, fair enough. You guys gonna have you guys gonna like beat each other up now? I'm gonna come up with like fancy hand signs and say like, yeah, we're part of the part of the so and so gang. Watch out! I'll get some elbows in there. Probably figure out the elbows. Um, how I normally do all those is kind of like a an upside down U. I can do the same with the knees too. Well, not a U. It's like a square that kind of just devils out. Um, and then we got our uh, bicep, which is two, two well, three muscles, obviously, but it's called. A, but um, the three muscles here. And then the, we have a tendon that kind of goes down the middle. And then we have our, our muscles here. Our muscle there. This is actually two muscles, but I kind of treat it as one. Bicep kind of just slips in there. This sneaks sneaks its way in between those two other muscles. Like, excuse me, gentlemen. Gonna fit right in here. Are we all part of the staff gang. Who are we beating up? <laughs> Get some deltoids going on here. Figuring out how things are fitting together. Um, the deltoid obviously it wraps around there, kind of wraps over. Terry's major that kind of slots in. Terry's major and minor kind of like stick in there and, and grab onto the bone. Um, and they're cradled by our uh, thing that I keep forgetting. The tissimus dorsi. That's right. We got our, our uh, scapula. Scapula? I think they're too high, actually. Scapula is probably one. And our, our uh, triceps. Oh my god. Our trapezoid. Trapezius. Trapezoid. Our trapezoid shape. And trapezius. Our trapezius muscle that kind of goes like that, like we know. We got our seventh. I think it's the seventh vertebrae of the spine. Kind of like protrudes there a little bit. Kind of a little bit of a divot to the um, for where the spine kind of the muscles meet the spine and dives in a little. Seventh, got it. Yeah. So this is something that I, I, I want to avoid. Is I want to. Yeah, 
This is why I always end up with characters with flatter faces, because I don't like having this huge shelf between the chin and the neck. Um, it seems weird. But I think it's also because I have characters that have very thin necks, right? So that's also part of the reason. Um, we got our deltoid that's coming here with our pectoralis. It kind of sticks in over there, kind of wraps around, similar to how the uh, uh, teres major and minor interact. We have our other muscle, the bicep, our other muscle, that's right. The muscle I can't remember, the one that everyone knows, the bicep. Um, it kind of wraps in underneath the uh, pectoralis. I'm going to emphasize that a little bit. And we normally end up with like, this little triangle shape here. That's a nice little landmark to be aware of. I think I've, I've kind of reached the place where I can almost dynamesh this together. Um, again, it looks like garbage, I'm aware. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get it. We'll get it eventually. But considering we started with nothing today, and we have something, that's, that's the thing, right? We did a thing. Even if it's not a really good thing. <laughs> Gotta start somewhere. Now, the other thing to be wary of is that the hair does affect how the, the, the silhouette of the face is red. You want to make sure that you don't have your hair jutting into the side of your face. Yeah, I've, I've added that kind of shelf now. Um, so maybe it can contact the back, but I always make sure that it curls inwards first, because otherwise it really jacks up the, uh, the, the, the silhouette of your face. Uh, something to be careful of. We did a thing, yeah. Are those neighbors doing some uh, dance or having a party out there? Oh, you yeah. know, they're just they're just living their best life, I guess. Yeah. Lots of people have parties around here. I just there's always like I can always hear music playing next door. And not even like the in, the next door in the building, it's fine. Like this is like in this building, it's fine. The noise is coming from the building next door. I'm <laughs> just like, what the hell? <laughs> um, also, the ceiling upstairs; those people thump around a lot. But like, I can hear like I can hear music from like outside neighbors. <laughs> it's funny. It's really funny. Like my indoor neighbors are, are quieter than you. Okay, I'm just making sure that the, uh, the, the rib cage has volume. Right now the rib cage is very, very flat, right? You can see that there's nothing there. Um, that's something to be wary of as well. They hold in a giant music box in front of your window, yeah. You can get uh, DMCA to stream because uh, neighbors wanted to get <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I don't think you can actually make out what the lyrics are, especially not through the stream light. Um, but you can like hear, you can hear the bass. Oop, they just dropped the base. Not right now. I'm just <laughs> don't worry, there's no parties going on right now. Yeah, blocking some knees. 
So the knees are, are interesting. You got, I'll explain the knees a little bit and the kind of leg muscle structure. We got this kind of muscle band that goes around here and that kind of frames the quadricep. Quadricep, we have one major muscle that fits down here and then here and then we have the strip down here. I know there's four, but I kind of break it down to three major shapes. Um, in fact, I usually just kind of like combine all this stuff because it's not really necessary, but this one, this one kind of sticks out a little bit and this, it matters because you get this kind of, uh, this shape, right? Where, um, it's a, it's not like a straight line from pelvis to the knee. It kind of dips inward. Oh boy, I might have to stop this fairly soon because I'm having a very hard time talking. And I'm sorry about that. But yeah, my throat is killing me. Mm. Yeah, at least they party in the day or night. Yeah. But um, we did mostly what I wanted us to do, right? We got a, a block out. Again, like, I haven't really hit the character yet. Um, that still needs to be worked on. But the important thing is that we have something, right? And we're kind of breaking it down, getting things together, um, even if there's still a lot to do. Um, so don't worry about it too soon, right? Um, you're going to be revisiting and retouching and, and adjusting a lot, right? Um, so just keep that in mind. Just don't stress out over it. You're good to go. But I, I want to at least get us to the point where I merge this all together. Um, and I, I will, again, I will be doing more off stream, but um, like the whole talking is, is a bit different. But you get the major ideas, right? Uh, so just kind of getting some ideas down. And I'll, obviously I'll get more into detail about anatomy and stuff um, as we go. I was hoping that we'd kind of get into clothing and stuff too, but that'll be all next week. Um, let's just get our, our base body to a good place, and then uh, we can worry about that after. You know what's fun to do? <laughs> this is fun to do. Here. Before, after. This is what we got with our, like, our block out mesh, and now. Come on, I, I did the thing. Okay. All right, so what I want to do now, this is in a pretty good place proportionally. Well, not really, but sort of. Enough for me to merge it together. I might, I might lower this a bit. I think this needs to come down. Better. The knees a bit lower too. And yeah, I think our arms are pretty good length. We can probably. Uh, oh yeah, we can. We can block in our horns and stuff too. I forgot about that. Let's get that in. So I want to get at least all of, like at least 
a representation for everything. Uh, so we're going to start with the horns. Back face masking was turned off. <laughs> there we go. Um, we're just going to dynamesh these. Okay. Doing good so far? Thanks, Nuts. I always underestimate like how much talking really just kills your throat after a while. But I hope you you're all um, getting something out of this. Even if I'm not going into like super huge amounts of detail. And again, I'll, I'll go over everyone's stuff, whoever wants to share it, and I'll do drawers or whatever. Definitely good, good. You know, this is the first time that I've like tried to formally, well, semi formally teach. Any content, so a little bit of a new experience. Again, keeping things very rough and loose. And then it's, it'll be a, just a matter of, of doing exactly like we always do, right? So we just pass over it and refine it one step at a time. Um, I want to be very clear about that because, like, uh, again, I'll, I'll do stuff off stream, but I, and I don't want people thinking it's like, oh man, you did all this stuff, but I'm really just doing the same stuff. Um, I'm just hitting it again and again and again until it's accurate, right? Um, and that's what you, that's that's exactly what you have to do. Um, so every time you hit it, you just look at it, look at your model or your concept, reevaluate, say, am I am I hitting what I want? And then you go in and you just refine and refine and refine and refine. Um, you can achieve anything you want as long as you put enough time and effort and patience into it. Um, you do, of course, need to like have an understanding of what is uh, like what anatomically you need to do. So if you're if you're finding an area that's just not looking right, just find images. Just look up an image and say, like, what does the forearm look like? And just look at that arm, look at that form or forearm and, and, and make it. Um, and when I look at stuff, um, I can I can happily say I happily give I give uh, feedback on like ways you can simplify it if you're going for something more stylized and things like that too. So don't worry about that so much. Just try to get it anatomically accurate. Um, and I can I can help you out with uh, with uh, stylization and exaggeration and stuff like that. Well, it's not just about the motivational speech. It's it's more like I want it, I want people to know how to approach things, right? Um, so again, yeah, I'm not like going through all the details. I'm not telling you what all the muscles are, um, but you can you can find all that information. The important thing is just evaluating, looking, and saying like. Does this look right? And if it doesn't, find out why. Because um, I don't want to just regurgitate information that's already out there. For one, I want to. I'm I'm trying to show you guys how to help yourselves and how to like work through something. That's more of what my goal is here. Um, because I don't want to just give the same information that other people just give it. That's the point, right? 
why you take it from me when you can take it from someone who's really educated in anatomy, for example. Right? Learn from the source. Don't learn from like a subsource. Um, I'm super spooked. Is now falling. Hey, you're falling. Um, so that's the big thing, right? The horns are helping. The horns are helping it, making her feel like the right person. Um, Soph is trying to do a professional teachers don't bother to even try. Make students learn. Yeah. What's the sweating about, Nas? Are you worried about something? Oh, I'm super spooked. <laughs> oh no, spooky. The more you look at it, or the more I look at it, the more I agree with, uh, I think it was Cable who said earlier that the head is too big. Um, which I knew, but I wasn't sure if it was like what I wanted to go for. But right now, I, I feel like that's not what I want. Or maybe the neck is too small. No, no. The, the, the problem is shoulder width is three heads on a realistic human. Um, so I'm just thinking about like what, how I want that to, to look, right? I mean, you can, you can do that. If you're making something stylized, you can make something have a bigger head, right? It's not a big deal. Um, but I feel like that's not what I want. So what I might do um, is two things. One, go like this. Um, I like how her head and her chest are the same polygroup for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, but there you go. Anyway. Okay. <laughs> uh, most important parts, it's true. I know you guys can't hear anything, but I'm listening to music, so I'm just gonna. Oh, it's still going. I remember good. Oh god, what happened? <laughs> I look away for a second. I'm like, wait a minute. <laughs> this isn't how I left it. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, leave it. <laughs> it was better. It was better. ZBrush improved it for me. ZBrush was just watching, like, you know what would be better? If the arms just stretched out a lot. I think that would be better. Thank you for the suggestion, ZBrush. I appreciate it. All right, this is going to take a lot of figuring. I'm going to do some research for some hair like this. I'm not going to get too in-depth. That's another thing to do too, is like as you're sculpting, rough stuff out and be like, well, how am I going to approach this? And then you got to like do some research and say like, okay, how am I going to make this work? 
Um, so maybe look at realistic hair, look at some stylized hair too, because we can kind of figure out like, okay, how do the, how do, how are the shapes worked out? Obviously because it's symmetrical right now, it looks very, very weird. Um, like sonic hair, but we will, uh, we will work on that. Um, but for now she can go fast. Research anime hair, indeed. Um, yeah, you can you can get like influence or inspiration on from many many places. But yeah, just figure out like how how to structure it. Um, it's a uh, a little bit challenging sometimes, and you definitely don't want to be working in a void. And I'll say stuff like that too. If I'm looking at something and this is like this isn't looking quite right, I'll say like, look up images of this thing, find this thing, right? Um, I will be a little bit more critical when it comes to um, 3D feedback than I was with 2D feedback, just because I know that I, I personally am not um, the most qualified when it comes to 2D um, when I'm aware of that. But 3D, I at least have a good bit of experience, and I'm going to be a little bit more critical. And I can give more points. Just be aware of that. I don't want like anyone to feel bad if I'm just like saying like, "Oh, fix this, fix this, fix this, fix this." It's just like I want you to be better. Um, so just something to be aware of too. Uh, and you get ripped a new one. <laughs> yeah. But don't just don't be discouraged, please. Um, when the 2D feedback wasn't enough to tear me down, now I've got to handle 3D feedback. Wait. Oh, well, yeah. Needs more butt. Not enough butt. Oh man, at, at work. Uh, actually, I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'll talk about that after the after the vlog, but. I have things to say about the anatomy notes I received at work. <laughs> um, the most valuable thing to an artist is honest feedback. Yeah. Uh, how many people uh, are talking about uh, are taking part in this workshop? Is there a place everyone? Yeah, everyone uploads their whips on the Discord. It's about five or six people who are who are actually actively doing stuff. It's it's fairly small. It's just a drop in thing. It's not even super formal. Normally, you actually see a little bit of the butt behind as well. You see a little bit of the behind behind. Oh yeah, just curious, I'll check it out. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> Personality gang. That's right. Just gotta I think this the character just needed a little bit more person. That's right. Um I'm doing it, just not uh, confidence in my 2D skills and more so concentrating in 3D as uh, I go for the most part. Fair enough. Anyone is free, like everyone is free to take what they want out of it. Um, I do have like a specific structure um, and if people want to like learn how I do it and do it the same way that I do it, then you know, you can follow along, but I think it is good that you, you do it in your own way. That's something that I always say too, is like whenever you follow a tutorial, 
Um, don't just do the tutorial. Make your own thing while kind of following the direction of whatever um, information you're following. Um, and that could go for, for anything, right? Um, like even when uh, when I was first making games and whatnot, I never I never did what everyone did and just do like I want to make pong or whatever, right? I said like I looked at I looked at some videos on like how to create like a third person controller, and I didn't use any of their assets. I just created my own. Um, I said okay, I'm gonna make my own assets work with this information. Um, so it's like okay, so they're telling me how to set up a camera and throw in a model. And they would have like the model files already with the animation files. I'm like, no, no, I'm gonna make my own model, my own animation files, and I'm gonna put it on there. Um, so it's like it's it's just it's important to kind of make make it your own and learn uh, that way. Because if you're just regurgitating information, um, you're you're not gonna learn anything. Um, so. On that note, on that rant, on that long-winded answer, Jaker, I think what you're doing is good because you're doing things your own way, um, but are trying to uh, get something out of it. Right? Uh, another thing that's uh, that you, you you'll see as well is the the bicep it is comes in a little bit further than the tricep, so you see the tricep a little bit behind. Right? So that's what I'm just trying to do here. Just pull that muscle in. And we can, Inflate this a little, um, and depending on like how stylized you go to, your arms might be more tube-like, right? Less, less anatomical. I'm going for a little bit more anatomical because I haven't been doing that a lot lately. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of very tubey characters, a lot of very very cartoony and anime-looking characters that don't necessarily have any detail whatsoever. And um, I, I think it's good to kind of stretch those muscles. Also, I, I feel like I can, you guys can get a little bit more out of it if, I, if I'm not doing something super basic. Well, I say basic, that's not the right word because it's just different, right? Um, those stylized characters are not necessarily uh, lesser art. And it's just, the, you, the work is required in different places. But we're starting to get we're starting to get there now. Uh, I'm starting to feel a little bit better about this. Uh, it's not, you know, this is helpful. I see the stream on the left, and I can see it a lot smaller and further away. And I'm starting to, I can definitely get ideas from that. So I think another thing I want to do is I want to like lower this part of the body, um, pull that out, um, pull that down. Right. I definitely need a little bit more muscle. The, the, the deltoid actually kind of goes, it ends about halfway down the upper arm. Uh, it's, it's very common for like, to, have, to see like very tiny deltoids, <laughs> but they extend pretty far. Looking very pod? Thank you, Kate. Like I'm not. I'm under no uh, illusions. Obviously, there's a long way to go. Marco Antonio Dev, thank you for following. Oh, swole arms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even if they're not swole, <clears throat> like what ends up happening is the deltoid is um, it doesn't end there. It just it tapers off, right? So sure, most of the bulge is up here, but it, it, the taper could carries on down to about midway. Like the actual muscle extends down that far. I'm also exaggerating the proportions a bit, so. I think I do need to inflate the interior of the leg a little bit. Just, there we go. That's better. There's too much of like a, a gap there.
Even if someone had really thin legs, you wouldn't have that much of a gap. Well, thanks, Starblade. There we go. Um, one uh, one thing that I, I never forget that I that I love is that um, often it's very easy to forget like which is the higher here, right? Um, and a good way to remember that is this. Hold on, let me let me get the snipping tool. Is um, the ankles go down like this, and this part goes down like this, right? And what ends up happening is if you go like this. Put a little eyes here, you get an angry face. <laughs> it's a little frowny face. That's right. A little frowny face. <laughs> no worries. Let's get a little bit of the detail going on in the back of the knee. Um, so what ends up happening here is you got a couple muscles that wrap down the back, and then you have uh, all the muscles here that kind of like tuck in underneath. And you'll have a little bit of a crease too, where the uh, leg normally bends a little bit. This is one area that I'll, I, I admittedly am weak in, is the back of the leg. I'm actually going to do some research this week, kind of refine my, my knowledge here. But this part of the leg is it always to lose me. Like this area, this is my weak point. And I'm not afraid to admit that. It's also hard to sculpt when it's in parts right now. i got to weld this together. Angry legs, indeed. Brownie face. Did you put uh, vodka in that tea? Mm. No, I don't like vodka. Hard whiskey or bust. Um, oh, there is no following. Thank you for following. Um, if you cover the legs with uh, some pants or a longer skirt, you don't need the details there. No, but it's, you still want to know about it. Um, and I think having the, uh, the, uh, the structure there is very helpful um, in making sure that everything over top feels right. So I, I love getting like, the anatomy of the body in first, because then you, you know it's just like, okay, I know that what's underneath the clothing is accurate so that when I place the clothing on top, I know that it's right. Once you start placing the clothing though, you might realize that, oh, the legs are too thick and stuff like that, but that's, that's fine. Like you can make those adjustments. You know that the, the body is accurate as far as like it has all the muscle structure that it needs. This is gonna be a long as video to upload to YouTube. Yeah, I've, it's gonna be four hours. I've uploaded a four hour video before, which was for the uh, Shadow of the Colossus playthrough, a few four hour videos. Um, the last one I uploaded for this workshop was, I think it was two and a half hours. So. Um, but yeah, we're, we're pretty much done for today anyway. I'm just going to weld this together. I'm also going to save. I'm going to save this as a new file now. You want all those right spots in the right places so you all have... Uh, yeah, well, it's not about having the option, because if you just place clothing over top without any body underneath, you might not necessarily see, like you might. Here, let me let me do scuff it. I'm gonna scuff it with uh, with 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 uh, the snipping tool. So if I don't have any anatomy underneath, what might end up happening if I said like, okay, I just have a head, and then I start placing clothing, and then you're like, oh, I want to have a T-shirt, and I just like I do something like this, and then the the arm would stick out over here, and and you might think this looks right, and you're like, I don't really know what's wrong. And it's because the arm is just freaking dipping, and your shirt's going right into the, where the arm would be, and you're like doing that. Like, even if this part lined up, 
right? And this, this is correct, right? Even if that was correct, and you were like, okay, I only sculpt model the stuff that you see. And then I started building this t-shirt and you're like, oh, but then the t-shirt's gonna go like this because I want it to be baggy or whatever. And I want the folds to go like this, but the folds actually like cutting into where the arm would be. And then it looks wrong and you're like, I don't really know what's wrong, but you don't know what's wrong because there's no anatomy underneath. Um, so if you have a body underneath and you see like something's looking wrong and you can just like, be like, oh, it's because it's the, the, the folds are clipping into the arm and there's a divot. Um, so it's, it's stuff like that. Uh, would you like to end the stream in French? No. Right now I would like to stop talking. <laughs> um, now I understand, yeah. Um, yeah, so this is just to make sure that you have the, the body structure, right? Actually, this is a good time to kind of like... Another good thing to do is give yourself drawovers. Um, so sort of just kind of figure out, oh, what's wrong, right? But this is obviously not a good drawer. Um, anyway. <laughs> yeah, no worries. Uh, great work on this workshop. Definitely uh, was what I was looking forward to all week, all, all weekend. I'm glad. I'm glad. Um, we definitely like. Yeah, I think I think we I got us to where I was hoping we would get today, and that's pretty rad. Um, I'm staying on schedule. That being said, um, I want to do one more thing. Uh, Dynamesh. I'm going to Dynamesh just a little bit higher. Uh, yeah. um, and then I'm going to divide this twice. So I usually like to create a Dynamesh, but then divide it. So I go. Then you sub tool, and we're gonna hide the hair um, because we're gonna project it. Um, oh, I don't know what happened to. Oh no, I messed up. I broke the head there. Oh, whatever. Um, we'll just project the details back up. Um, but now it's all one big mesh, and we'll do a proper Z remesh too later. But this just gets us to a generally good place, you know? There we go. Much better. And that's why you don't want to go in and add too many details too early either, because when you do this stuff, it becomes like you, you have to end up like wiping it all away anyway. We're just gonna smooth that out. Okay. And again, it's still okay to be a little bit rough here, right? It, we're we got we got ways to go. <laughs> Goblin girl, yeah, man. Um, I'm gonna put this uh, workshop in my CV. Being trained by <laughs> trained by Christoph is a huge perk in the industry. I don't know about that. Uh, CV, yeah. Uh, well, he's saying like the workshop as an educational thing in the CV. But yeah, I think the model is what's gonna matter. Now we're gonna turn those back on. Cool. All right, now it's all one mesh, and we can carry on and start refining further. Um, so that's kind of where I want you guys to get to for next week. Is um, 
get to the point where you've blocked it out, you've combined it all into one big Dynamesh, and um, we're ready to like keep polishing it up a little bit more. And we'll start to um, get the body into like a generally good place so that we can start doing clothing next week. Uh, of course, I'll be giving you guys feedback. So you're, you guys are go you guys are going to be one week behind me um, because obviously I'm not going to be expecting you to uh, start the clothing right away without having proper anatomy um, blocked in. So you're going to get that started, and then uh, we'll do some a little bit of a feedback pass, um, and I'm going to start doing uh, going over clothing, um, and then after that we can start. Uh, going further and further into refinement over the following weeks. But I think we've got a good base, and uh, we're getting somewhere. Um, I just want to show the person who wants to hire me that I know the glorious crystal. <laughs> I'm not that popular. Who the heck is that guy? But I appreciate the gesture. Um, so we're going to be doing clothing and things. We're getting the body and stuff. Yeah, just just body for now. Um, try to get your character's proportions um, down, and then we're going to start blocking clothing next week. Well, body, hair, eyes, and stuff like this, right? Uh, way too high? Uh, I don't know about that. I, I kind of disagree, but... Um, you could be very well right. But I, I normally consider it it's to line up with these creases on the side. Pretty close anyway. What might be giving you that thought, though, is that these creases are too high. So this all has to come down. Which I can agree with. Uh, <laughs> you don't see many lucky girls. Has no, that has no, no uh, reference to gender, by the way. Um, jeez. Oh my god. You guys. Be nice to each other. Stop, stop insulting Snow White's mom. Almost fell off my chair. We can all dream. Alright. Yeah, I think this is a pretty good place to stop for today. My throat's killing me. I'm going to continue refining the, the body off stream as well to kind of get it into a better place. I'm going to save this again. Um, Alright, so. Um, I will stop the recording now, so anyone who's watching the VOD, it's been a pleasure, and I hope to see you all next week uh, for our clothing blockout, and then we'll, once we're done that, obviously we'll start refining everything. Um, but yeah, let's close that recording now.